first day of shooting, we picked the most difficult set ever. Smoke, mirrors in every direction. Love it. Welcome to Twilight. You're listening to Another Bite of Twilight, a podcast where we look back on our obsession with the Twilight Saga and continue to freak out ten years later. All right. All right. We're back. Hi, guys. Hello. Season's greetings. Mm Mm-hmm. Or if you're listening in the future, just happy Twilight. Happy Twilight. Days. Yeah. (laughs) Happy Twilight life. I'm Mel. I'm Kel. And this is your favorite Twilight podcast, Another Bite of Twilight, coming at you from Boston, Massachusetts. Yep. Well, actually, yep. not really Boston, but <laughs> whatever. Basically. Close enough. West Cambridge. Yeah, and I am not in Cambridge right now. I'm in my parents' house up in the attic, which is cool. renovated, so it's not, like, cold up here. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what it looks like, but when you said that, it sounds like... Your Joe and Little Woman. Yeah. <laughs> up in the creaky attic with a candle. Yeah. <laughs> That's so nice, Mel. That's so cool. I know. It is cool. <laughs> we actually do have another attic. This is like the oh, lower yeah. attic, but... Wow, that's amazing. Our house doesn't have an attic. It doesn't have any attic. Yeah, that's right. Mm-mm. You have a very, like, long basement, though. That's true. I used to that never even know that you had that other part of your basement. Yeah, it's pretty big, but it's mostly junk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was so frustrated when I was home recently oh, because really? the whole basement is just, I don't know, the the part with the projector mm-hmm. had all this junk down there oh, yeah. and you can't even hang out. And I was like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. Like, this was supposed to be a room to hang out in and it's all... Random furniture. Yeah. And, I don't know. That's, that's my biggest problem with being home, too, is just, like, not having control over the shit that is lying everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, on our coffee tables, like, my parents' mail is just piled up. Yeah. Or on the kitchen table, too. I'm like, okay, I can't even sit here because there's so much. Like, all the groceries just stay here the whole week. <laughs> you know what I didn't know, Mel, until recently? What? Is apparently I always leave drawers open, and I just wanted to say I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't. No, I I never noticed that. To you as my roommate. Yeah, I mean I didn't either. Who but... told you that? <laughs> um, Charlie. No, I don't think so. <laughs> He's well, like he pointed it out, and mm. I've noticed it now. And he, like, I'll be with him. By the way, guys, isn't it crazy? I guess I'll make it official. I guess I'll just come out and say it, that I'm dating someone named Charlie. Charlie? Just like Charlie from Twilight. And he has a mustache. Oh, my God. And he likes fishing. Oh, my God. That's perfect. That's about it for similarities, (laughs) but... (laughs) Uh, I think he likes, you know, fish fry in a bag. I think he likes food like that. Yeah, greasy fish fry. Yeah, he likes stuff like that. (laughs) But anyway, he was like, oh, you... I don't know, it's just become sort of a joke. Not in a mean way, but that I Mm. always leave the the drawers, the cabinet just open. I never noticed Mm. that, but I'm not very observant. You know, I get, like, toothpaste on the mirror and I don't notice. (laughs) But um, what I did notice is that you often leave, you know, like, wipes that you'll have in the bathroom. You'll leave, like, the lid off and i didn't know if oh yeah we're supposed to do that no okay that's just me being like absent-minded okay okay because <laughs> i was like yeah that's a problem because it dries it yeah out. i was afraid it's of bad. It, but i thought maybe you did it like for a reason no i seriously don't okay that's good it's to so know. annoying yeah i mean i i'm like what the hell well that's good to know because I, I thought there was like a purpose like Maybe prevented like mold or something, or these. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe like oh, my hands are dirty, so I shouldn't touch the. Yeah, opening. but but yeah. no, it was just by accident. Oh, okay, <laughs> good. Well, that's good to know because then I could like, fix it if I did see it. Because sometimes I wouldn't touch it because I was like, oh, maybe she left it like that. <laughs> she likes it. I'll try not to do that. <laughs> 
Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> All these things I have to look out for. No, that's Cabinet. a small thing. I'm I'm literally so absent minded. Kelly knows I just don't notice stuff. I always too, as a roommate, I always uh think like, Oh, okay, Kelly took out the trash last. I have to do that. And then I just forget to all the time. Mm, it's it's hard. Yeah. Stuff like that. It's usually just like whoever I feel like at my parents' house too, like with our family, just whoever happens to be the one that is like, I can't take this anymore. It's mm. overflowing almost. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure some people are better about it. But yeah. It's whatever. funny being home. Like my mom will just take out the trash just because like it's that time of week to do it. Or like she just does laundry like That's every other day. Like when I'm, I mean, granted we have to pay for laundry, but when we're on our own, like I wait to do laundry until I have absolutely no clean clothes left yeah. anymore. My laundry basket is seriously overflowing right now. Yeah. There's like a dome of clothes over it. Yeah. It's bad. <laughs> I have bought new clothes to avoid doing laundry before. <laughs> I think I have too. <laughs> I hate it. Me too. I always see this <sighs> one woman when I do laundry though and she's Whenever I pass her, she goes, oh, worst time of the month, like, doing laundry. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Yeah. Worst time of the month. month. So, so she pushes it, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. Well, anyway, it is hard. Today, we are discussing the legendary star of the show Kristen Stewart Kristen Stewart finally you know we've done we've covered Rob we've covered Taylor we've covered Stephanie Mm -hmm. we've covered Kristen in some capacities but never as her own person so yeah we're very excited we did did talk about her in a two-part Robson episode Mm -hmm. which is some of our best work (laughs) and when she did Howard Stern we had an episode about that because that was just mind-blowing yeah yeah We're going to be talking about her whole life, basically. Yeah. First, we wanted to talk... As much as we can. Yeah. (laughs) First, we wanted to talk about her new movie, Happiest Season, which, if you guys haven't seen it, should we, like, give a spoiler alert right now? That maybe you should, like, jump ahead? Yeah. Yeah. Like, ten minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Jump ahead, like... be spoiled. Yeah. Jump ahead, like, ten minutes if you haven't seen it yet, because we're going to talk about it right now. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. Let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. I thought it was really cute. I thought it was cute. I, you know, I did have mixed opinions on it, though. Ooh, I thought, that's exciting. I th- I'm sure as you say them, it will bring out. Yeah. Well, first of all, things. I hated Harper, the girl that she ends up with, oh, the girlfriend. Yeah. Okay. I hated her. I. Yeah, it's so interesting. I started rooting for her to get with the other girl, the ex. What was her name? Um, her, the actress name is Aubrey. I don't know. Yeah, Aubrey Plaza. Yeah. I don't know her character's well, name. If you're listening, guys, and if you haven't seen it, but you also don't care about being spoiled, uh, <laughs> Kristen Stewart plays Abby, who's dating Harper, and I think they live in Pittsburgh. Yeah. And they go to Harper's family's house for the holidays for Christmas, and Har- Harper doesn't tell Abby until they're almost there that her parents don't know that she's gay. Which is horrible. Dating girl. I know. <laughs> and so she pretends to be just her friend. And so then she gets excluded all the time. Yeah. And Harper just keeps ditching her. And so Abby, a.k.a. Kristen Stewart, meets her ex-girlfriend who's in town. Meets mm-hmm. Harper's yeah. ex-girlfriend. And you know. the and ex-girlfriend... I, I started to ship it. Yeah, the ex-girlfriend that Harper used to date, she kind of did the same thing. Like, she wasn't openly out, so mm-hmm. she only dated in secret and then when it came to light somehow that they were dating she denied it and told everyone that i guess i just looked up her name is riley that riley was oh, yeah. obsessed with her or something or like i don't know yeah that's I, what she said yeah i won't leave her alone yeah and humiliated her and so riley's character started to connect with christian stewart's character about you know how they both had felt because of harper and i mm-hmm. Yeah, I rooted for that way more. I thought Harper was horrible. She was. You could just see how, because she, all her high school friends were in town and Mm -hmm. stuff, and she was just hanging out with them, and hanging out with her ex-boyfriend all night, and you could see that she was 
falling back into this other person. And... Yeah. Well, she was being, like, very, yeah, I mean, heteronormative, but... Yeah, I was talking to my. That's what I mean, I guess. Yeah, I was talking to my friend Tess about this, and Tess is a lesbian, and she was like, "Oh, like it's a relatable story, I guess. Like having to pretend to be something that you're not. I feel like it's something a lot of people could relate to when they see it, but I think one issue is Harper's family wasn't that relatable. Being like the mayor and I know. the sister was like overly quirky, and the family was oh, like insulting each other with like. <laughs> disney channel level like offensive lines like just wasn't a family that i could really picture in real life and so the issue of like harper not being able to come out to her family the stakes just didn't feel like real enough because it didn't seem felt totally exaggerated yeah like her parents didn't really seem like the type that would be that upset or i don't Mm -hmm. know i wish we got a little more of that because i didn't quite get like yeah he's becoming the mayor or trying to but so i don't know yeah i didn't maybe if they showed us them being more like offensive or something or i I don't know yeah but like the family was also so unlikable that it was like what are you losing if you (laughs) they were unlikable (laughs) like there's oh my god that sister was horrible sloan yeah or the the like one who was like very quirky and forgot what yeah. her name was <sighs> i just think that i did think it was funny though know, <laughs> um <laughs> she's talking about her book that she's writing and yeah i think harper or something is like you've been working on that for 10 years <laughs> sister says it takes a long time to build a world yeah. <laughs> i thought Kristen's character was so cute she was she was too forgiving though like i didn't understand I why she kept being like oh but it's okay it's okay like no it's not okay Mm -hmm. get mad she put you in a she not only did harper put her in a very uncomfortable situation first of all harper invited her to come and then was like acting as if then took it back then took it back next day yeah (laughs) and so then kristen's character is like almost already there she's so excited she's put in a very uncomfortable situation and harper never goes out of her way to make her feel better i know Oh, I, like, saw myself in Abby, Kristen. I don't mm-hmm. know. I It was killing me. but It was cute but sad, too, when oh, she was texting her. Yeah. Like, I just got home. Like, hope you're having fun. And no answer. And then she's like, I'm going to sleep. And then she's like, good night. Oh. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I felt so bad for her. And then the next day when she's like, are you okay? Like, I didn't hear from you. And she's harper's like yeah i don't have to report where i'm going like what you said you were gonna hang out afterwards <laughs> and you brought your girlfriend home to your family's house like you don't then just go out with your friends and leave your girlfriend alone I when know. she's clearly not doing well it's just yeah one of those things where it's like are we supposed to be happy that they got together in the end kind of like big and carry <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i felt like the whole situation the way they were acting, fighting, and relationship was realistic to me. So mm-hmm. I, it didn't make me dislike the movie. Yeah. I I enjoyed the enjoyed movie. Enjoyed it. But yeah, I get what you mean. That by the end, I actually didn't want them to be together <laughs> anymore. So yeah, I was literally rooting for her not to take her back. Me too. I wanted her to be with Riley. Yeah. It was just one of those things where if she had a little more self-respect, I think she would have been like, no you know what, you treated mm-hmm. me horribly, and, oh, even the fact that Harper literally didn't tell that guy that she was in a relationship. I know. Her ex-boyfriend. Like, what's the harm in just telling him? He's not gonna go blab to the whole family. Yeah. And she didn't even have to say if she really didn't want to. She didn't have to say, oh, yeah, I'm dating a girl. She could just be like, yeah, I'm with someone. Yeah, exactly. Ugh. She was purposely she just, uh, flirting with him, too. She was. She had her hand on his arm. Yeah. I mean, I I think that does happen. Like, people are different people around different people. Or a different person around different people. And they become someone who they're not. And they fall into old habits. But I just feel like there's a way they could have portrayed that that would have made me feel more sympathetic sympathetic for Harper. 
Mm-hmm. And I, when she, especially when she was like in front of everyone, she's like, "What? What? I'm not a lesbian!" Like that I was know. that was too late. Too late. <sighs> even I don't know. Even even if that was a very hard thing to overcome, that moment, that's where you should have stood up yeah. in front of everyone and said, "I'm in love with <laughs> Abby." Blah blah blah. <laughs> I have a few random things to say um, about the movie. <laughs> I liked that Kristen's character was like a pet sitter. Oh, she was a pet right? sitter? I thought she just had a lot of pets. Oh, did she? Yeah, I think they were just for her pets. Oh. <laughs> I thought that was like her job. Because I know she was a student too, but okay, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know why though. I thought the way she was talking about it seemed... Not like they were hers. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But I loved her hair. Kristen's hair. So cute. Like, shoulder length. White blonde. She's had that look for years. I realized that. Well, that color for years. Yeah. While doing my research for this. Uh, And (laughs) I loved this part when um, Harper's mom acted asks Abby slash Kristen Stewart if she ha- if she has a boyfriend and she's like, Oh no, I don't <laughs> but I have. I've had lots of boyfriends. Not too many, like yeah. a normal amount. <laughs> I actually um I am going through a breakup now. He was a a milk yeah. man. <laughs> milk man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I loved that part. That was uh, funny. I love when her um gave best friend male best friend was pretending to be straight yeah. and he was like saying to harper's ex like uh you lift you lift uh and he's like well, what do you lift She's like uh, a thousand i know <laughs> oh my I god a thousand <laughs> that was funny yeah i like the part with the fish too yeah <laughs> huh. Yeah, I thought I found a lot of the people unlikable. Yeah, but I overall enjoyed myself. Me too. It was a fun movie, but it, I don't think it's gonna go down like as a classic, well-known no. Christmas movie. But that's a really hard thing to achieve. It is. It really is. No, has I mean I think been achieved recently. I know. There was because you've been doing that countdown. Yeah. I feel like it's on par with that movie Last Christmas with Amelia mm. Clark. I never saw it, but I feel like... No, it is way it better got, than Last Christmas, actually. It got a lot of buzz. I bet it is, yeah. yeah. That didn't look too good for me. Maybe it will go down a little more memorable than that, but I guess that's what I mean is like, oh, people know about it. Mm-hmm. Some people saw it, but I don't know if it's going to be a classic. I think what, while I was watching that movie, what struck me is what makes a really good Christmas classic is for it to have its own unique memorable Christmas score Mm. and I noticed that this movie didn't really have that um yeah kind of all comes down to the editing too Mm -hmm. but it was enjoyable and it was on the side of this movie that Kristen sent us that video so every single scene I was like was this it (laughs) I didn't even think about that yeah every scene (gasps) I was like was this when she sent it (laughs) whoa that's so weird to think about that while she was filming that movie yeah she was asked to be on our show during one of those texting Preston during one of those scenes she could have had us in her head Yo, yeah. During one of those scenes, they could have said "cut." She walks off. Yeah, and then records that thing. (laughs) (laughs) That's so weird to think about. I know. (gasps) Literally every scene, I was like, "Wait, is this the outfit she was wearing?" But it was just like a blackout like shirt. So, Mm. Mm -hmm. wow. I also loved how beautiful Pittsburgh looked, but it didn't seem fake. Like it looked like they actually shot it in Pittsburgh, which I think they did. But it looked very realistic. I know, I liked that too. Yeah, like, especially when they, like, got up on that roof, actually. And they're Mm -hmm. like, wow, look at this. And it wasn't some spectacular light show or whatever. It was just, like, a neighborhood lit up in Christmas lights. Yeah, I loved that. Yeah, it was cute. 
Although when she fell off the roof, I was like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It just seemed so silly. Yeah. Stuff like that. I'm like, don't don't make it a Hallmark movie, you know? Like, yeah. Give it, give it what it deserves. <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hate when people start screaming hysterically. I know. <laughs> in rom coms like that. <sighs> it was. It was interesting. It was. Yeah. I'm glad we uh, got the chance to talk about it. Mhm. So should we get into Kristen's life? Yeah. All right. So guys, I'm- I am worried. I I have because all right. I'm stuttering here. (laughs) We split it up. Mm -hmm. Mel's doing the first half Mm -hmm. until 2013. Yeah. I guess that's not really half, but until then. And then I'm doing 2013 to now. Yeah. So I'm doing like through Kristen's early life, through Twilight, and that's where we cut it off. But to be honest, I didn't really cover... Mine's mostly Kristen's like childhood and upbringing. That's cool. Because I feel like yeah. we've talked about her Twilight years so much on this show, so I don't want to yeah. reiterate That's stuff. what we want to learn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I guess I'll get into it. Let's do it. All right. So that's just like a presentation. Our girl <laughs> Kristen Stewart was born on Monday, April 9th, 1990, and she was born in San Fernando Valley of Los Angeles. And so this doesn't really have anything to do with Kristen per se, but a little fun facts about her birthday is that she shares a birthday with Little Nas X, Elle Fanning, Gerard Way, Leighton Meester, Hugh Hefner, and mm. Dennis Quaid. Uh, her That's birthday, a lot of people. yeah, a lot of people, and she's worked with some of them too. Her birthday makes her an Aries. I don't really know anything about zodiac signs, so. You guys can Google what that means. <laughs> um, and she, her Chinese zodiac is the horse. And cool. the day she was born, I'll Be Your Everything by Tommy Smith, which is a song I've actually never heard of, was number one on the U.S. music charts. And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was number one at the box office. Just to give you guys some cultural context here. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Mel. Yep. I like that. <laughs> That's cool. Doesn't really have anything to do with her, but... <laughs> Kristen, if you're listening, those are some fun facts. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured to learn more about someone, you have to learn about not just where they came from, but who they came from and who raised them. So I did a lot of digging more on Kristen's family than I probably did on uh, Robert Pattinson's family because this was very interesting to me. So first, Kristen's mom, her name is Jules Mann Stewart. Um, and man is like, I think her maiden name and then it's hyphen to a Stewart. So Kristen on the Howard Stern show said her mom was adopted by Ben and Norma Ehrman in Van Nuys, California in 1953. However, the internet says Mm. that Kristen's mom, Jules, is only 61 years old, which means she would have been born in 1959. And she also was reportedly born in, born and raised in Queensland, Arizona, uh, Australia. So I don't really know where the Van Nuys, California, 1953 Ben and Norma thing comes in. I don't know if that's just, like, a thing Kristen said or if, like, somehow she was born there or, like, adopted there and then they moved. I don't know. Weird. So, yeah, that's kind of weird. But she definitely is from Australia. So Kristen has Australian roots. I know we have a lot of Australian listeners, so shout out. Kristen loves Australia, and she vacationed there as a child in New Noosa Heads, which is one of her favorite places that she's said that she's ever been to. And she loves Australia so Mm. much that she actually named her dog, her childhood dog, Oz, after Oz Australia. And her dog was a Chihuahua Border Collie mix, which I really can't picture what that would look like. And I tried Googling it. (laughs) Me neither. (laughs) And I couldn't really find a good example. Hmm. So Kristen's mom, Jules, she moved to L.A. to pursue a career in Hollywood in her early 20s. And at around age 25 she married Kristen's dad John Stewart in Hollywood she has been an editor a writer but mainly a script supervisor and according to IMDB she has worked on movies such as Little Giants Jingle All the Way Scooby-Doo Snow Dogs Are We There Yet and Noah just to name a few and she also has TV credits for The Practice Halloween Town and the Sarah Silverman program and in 2008 Kristen uh, guest starred or just made a guest 
uncredited guest appearance on the Sarah Silverman project where she just like introduced a musical guest or something. Hmm. And then uh, later on, I think in 2010 or 2011, uh, Jules made her directorial debut for directing the movie K-11, which Kristen was originally going to star in, uh, but then she didn't end up starring in it, though she did do a small voiceover role, and Kristen's brother Cameron had a small role in there as well, and Jules also, around that time or a little bit after, co-created her own independent film company called Libertine Films, so she's very active and involved in the business. And when I was, I literally like went through her Instagram page, I was watching interviews with her and uh, seeing things that Kristen had said about her mom. And she seems like a really just free spirit. She has a lot of tattoos. Um, on wow. the Howard Stern show, Kristen said that her parents were hippies and talking about weed, how like they like either smoke weed or they don't care if she does. That's so cool. Yeah. And <laughs> watching, interesting. watching Kristen's mom talk, like especially about her movie K-11, she speaks so articular articulate articularly is that how you say it Articul- articulate yeah <laughs> the opposite of how i'm speaking right now and <laughs> very creatively like you can tell she has just a really strong passion for storytelling which she no doubtably passed on to Kristen. um and wow. she also has a very just like beautiful warm smile which i know it's weird to say Aww. but she seems like an incredibly sweet person and she also has a lot of pet wolves, which I think is cool and also Whoa. weirdly connected to Twilight. Yeah. Um, and she's really passionate about that. And she does a lot of wolves, like real wolves. Yeah, real wolves. <laughs> <laughs> she does a lot of like nonprofit work for wolves. And she also has a lot of horses that she rides competitively. She's super into animals. Wow, what a lady. Yeah, she's cool. Jules, if you're listening. <laughs> Jules, if you're listening, we love you. <laughs> She's also just very, very beautiful, I think, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So Kristen's father, his name is John Stewart. The less is known about him. He doesn't have an Instagram, and I also didn't dive as much into him. Um, but he is a stage manager, and he has worked on a lot of award shows mostly, including ones that Kristen hmm. has attended. So there's a lot of pictures of her at an award show where she's, like, also talking to her dad, who has this whole setup going. And um, Wow. Yeah, he uh, also has worked on Lopez Tonight, where he actually w- worked there while Kristen was a guest there one time, and it was cute. He's worked at the Jamie Kennedy Experiment, so cool. Weakest Link, Midnight on Comedy Central, and has somehow worked with Ryan Seacrest in some capacity. He's done a lot like of different jobs. Kristen's brother posted an Instagram, which I sent you, Kelly, of their oh, yeah. dad from like the 70s or something, and he was incredibly handsome, in my opinion. Yeah, he really looked like Tom Petty. Yeah, he did. He had, like, really... I mean, he still has really long blonde hair. Like, he has a very significant look to him. But when Mm -hmm. he was younger, he was gorgeous. I can't believe those are her parents. I know. Makes sense. Yeah, they're so beautiful. And he also is... He plays guitar, and he taught Kristen how to play when she was young. Um, Apparently, he's a cancer survivor. Mm. I don't really know when he had cancer, but Kristen talked about that in an interview. And she said that she had actually given him her cat when he was sick. And he really fell in love with the cat and didn't give it back. Um, and she didn't have the heart to ask for the <laughs> cat back. I didn't yeah, know she well, it was her. Cat. I think it was her, like her childhood cat or something. It was named Jella, but she also called it Max. And she mm-hmm. was like obsessed with her cat. But she let him have it when he had cancer. And then never got it back (laughs) and (laughs) Kristen's parents John and Jules they separated in 2010 and got divorced in 2012 after 27 years of marriage damn poor Kristen don't hurt her (laughs) don't hurt her Uh, wow that's like I know and that's a very long time to get to be married and get divorced I know what happens but Mm -hmm. that's always rough that is rough so then Kristen also has an older brother named Cameron Stewart, who is four years older than her, and he works as a lighting and rigging technician, I guess also called a grip in films, and I also mm. stalked his Instagram, and he is always, <laughs> like, traveling and up in mountains doing stuff or work, and he looks so much like Kristen, wow. like, especially when they were kids, 
pictures of him as a child looks exactly like her. Like, I actually couldn't tell the difference at all. They both have a very, like, androgynous look to them. And both very, yeah. very beautiful. He's very cute and tall and skinny. And I would actually love to date him. <laughs> so, <laughs> if Do you're it, listening, Mel. Cameron, Kristen, if you're listening, I am available. You can set me up. Um, <laughs> I would love to date him. That would be what the coolest. Yeah. Can you imagine? And, like, he has a pretty normal life. Like, he works on movies and stuff, but it's not like it would be yeah. unusual. I actually, he only has, like, 4,000 yeah. followers on Instagram. I feel like I could DM him, but that would be weird, right? Hey. I could give him a shot. shot. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. I just, <laughs> I think once he found out I had a Twilight podcast, I don't know if... <laughs> it's like unfortunately i think that would eliminate me which sucks <laughs> that does suck. um, but he's very attractive and he seems like a really creative guy um mm-hmm. he okay so kristen and cameron also have adopted brothers When I was younger, I knew that they had these adopted brothers named Dana and Taylor. And I remember I had originally Mm -hmm. read that they were their cousins who their family adopted. But as I was doing my research now, I couldn't find confirmation of that anywhere. So I think that's not actually true. I don't think that they are biologically cousins. I think that they just joined the family. And so Mm -hmm. couldn't really find a lot about them. There's not a lot about them out there. But Taylor... Taylor (laughs) was adopted (laughs) at 13 by Kristen's family. And when I say adopted, I don't know if that means he was like officially adopted. I don't know if he actually has the last name Stewart. There's like not a lot known, but Kristen has said in interviews that basically her family took in boys who became like family. So I don't know how, like, you know, that means different things to different people, but Taylor was Kristen's friend and he joined the family at 13. He's the same age as Kristen. And remember on Howard Stern, Kristen was talking about how her best friend came to live with her after his parents died of a drug overdose. So I'm assuming that's him, but I don't really mm-hmm. know. It's, I guess, frankly, not really any of our business. But um, I think that's the story with Taylor. And then Dana, their other brother, adopted brother, is I think one of Cameron's friends who came to live with them. And then also Cameron had a friend named Obi who lived with them, Kristen said in an interview. Again, really not mm. n- sure if like they're adopted. I was going through Kristen's mom's Instagram and, you know, she really mostly only posts pictures of Cameron and Kristen. So I don't know, but Kristen grew up with a lot of boys in her family nonetheless. Um, and she has described herself as feeling like she was one of the boys growing up and had three brothers and she was not treated any yeah. better or worse than them. And she describes having um, never felt like a child kind of when she was young. She was never coddled or babied in her family and she was very mature for her age. But she told Marie Claire in 2012, there were things I didn't tell my mom when I was like five that if I had just gone, I'm so freaked out about this. She could have been like, don't be, that's not, that's no big deal. And I would have been like, oh, gotcha. I'm going to be urging my kids, tell me what happened, talk to me. Knowing that, that there could be one thing that I could so easily take care of for them, but they just need to tell me. I think she kept a lot of things to herself and... She also has described herself growing up as being fiercely competitive. I think she attributes that to growing up with so many boys in her household and just Mm -hmm. never really being as vulnerable as she probably would have liked to have been back then. So then I did research on Kristen's childhood home, which this could be a straight up lie, but according to the Daily Mail, her house was for sale. <laughs> um, her childhood home was for sale in 2013, and it's located in Woodland Hills, and it sold for $1.75 million. It's a five-bedroom, six-bath home, and from the exterior, it looks wow. quite normal. It's kind of modest, but it does have a very manicured lawn. It's one of those houses where I feel like you can't really tell how big it is from the outside because um, it does look a little mm. bit, not smaller, but it doesn't look he- like a mansion. But then the backyard... But there's five yeah. bedrooms. Wow. <laughs> the backyard, you can tell it's really nice. They have a big pool. Um, and it's 
really eccentric. It's Alice in Wonderland themed. So they have this large swimming pool and then right next to it are these oversized chess pieces. They're like huge. Like you would see them at one of those like Market Street places that you go to. And they have like heart-shaped, wow. diamond-shaped marble tiles on the walls and on the floors, kind of looking like the cards in Alice in Wonderhand, Wonderland. Mm-hmm. And then there's this white rabbit sculpture that's on the wall along with lines from the book that say no no sentence first verdict afterwards and this you know very beautiful spiral staircase so it's very eccentric and cool and kind of like she yeah it's kind of like she grew up in wonderland yeah i think so and that was god yeah i saw that article actually but i didn't read it i don't know why i was just being picky with what i chose yeah i think it and that fits yeah i think so i don't i mean i don't know how long our family lived there but oh i also remember reading guys tell me if this is true i remember years ago reading that she had lived in a midwestern state for a year as a kid and i couldn't remember what state that was i think it's colorado yeah is that true i feel like we said that on the show but then i couldn't i only found like one little thing that confirmed that she had but I feel like no one's ever talked about that she did on Strange. snl she wore a shirt that was from a colorado zoo before so mm. maybe let us know guys <laughs> someone knows <laughs> yeah probably um, so also as a child kristen had a lot of hobbies she was really into guitar skateboarding surfing track basketball and soccer and she told Nylon Magazine that wow. she loved skateboarding so much, and that was her preferred method to go to school. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. And as a child, she had ambitions to work in Hollywood because of her parents and how much she loved being on set with them, and she could see how much they loved their jobs. But she didn't really specifically want to be an actor. She just knew she wanted to work in movies. And then at eight years old, she sang a dreidel song in her elementary school holiday musical, which I know a lot of people know. And was recruited by an agent to attend an open casting call where she then signed with an agent, I think. Mm-hmm. Crazy. I remember when I was a kid, my mom took me Cute. to what seemed like an open casting call. But it was actually this thing that supposedly you take your kid and they like take your fingerprints and take videos of you. And they use it if you're ever kidnapped someday. Oh, yeah. Did you ever go to one of those? No, but Madison was just, oh my gosh. I was talking to Madison and she was going through all her things at her mom's house and found the VHS yeah. of that and was like, what the hell? And she put it on and was like, no, what is this? It seems like it could go to like a tr- human trafficking site or something. <laughs> it seems so dangerous. Like, can't you just take that video at home? <laughs> yeah, Why? So but I have that video too, and I am flat out sobbing in it because all, all the people there are like, this is in case your child goes missing, in case your child's kidnapped. And so here I am thinking that that's a realistic thing that's going to happen to me someday, and I'm uh-huh. sobbing in the video. It was so scary. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I so know. weird. It seems really <laughs> not safe. <laughs> <laughs> What the heck? I'm sure that's not a thing anymore. Probably not. It, I don't know. I don't or know. is it? It's so sketchy. I, I mean, fingerprints, yeah, but now you now everyone has so many videos of their kids that why would you need a third party to take a video yeah. of your child in case they go <laughs> missing? Like what? I don't know. It was I was so annoyed too because my dad had taken my brothers like on a trip down the Cape that weekend, and so my mom was like, "We're gonna do something special," and she took me to do that, and it was so traumatizing. <laughs> <laughs> I so thought it was lame. like gonna be an audition or something. <laughs> Aww. Also, we had I video know. cameras. Like, why? My is mom that took necessary? so many home videos. <laughs> Scary. But anyways, hmm. so that's how she really got into acting. But she describes herself as being really shy and nervous when she first started out, especially with auditions. And she said she felt a lot of shame that the other girls in the auditions didn't really seem to feel like they were, like, really peppy and doing little skits mm-hmm. or dances. And she wasn't really on that level. And 
When she was young, she booked a lot of small roles. She was girl in line for Water Fountain in the 13th year in 1999. She was, oh, yeah, yeah, iconic. Oh, yeah. Iconic. <laughs> <laughs> Iconic. Iconic. She was the ring toss girl <laughs> in the Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas. She had a lot of cute little roles in 2000. Aww. She was in an indie drama, so her indie career started pretty early in 2001 called The Safety of Objects, in which she played Patricia Clarkson's tomboy daughter. And she also was mm-hmm. in a Porsche commercial, which is really cute. That is cute. But her big break wasn't until 2002 when she starred in panic room alongside Jodie Foster playing Jodie Foster's tomboy diabetic daughter. Christine was 10 years old at the time. She was 11 when it ended filming and she was 12 when the movie was released. I've actually never seen this movie and I feel like I should because it seems like it was very formu- formulative for Kristen's career. Have you seen mm-hmm. it? I actually think I did see it but it was mm-hmm. so long ago that I don't was really Was it like remember. before you really knew who Kristen Stewart was or... Yeah, yeah, I think so. We should watch it. So, yeah, we should. Um, she t- yeah. <laughs> she told me <laughs> times that she was so nervous at the premiere that a photographer told her to calm down, and she told him, "What you don't understand is that I actually can't open my hands." So then I googled pictures from the premiere, and her hands actually are balled into really tight fists in every single picture. She does look really oh. nervous. That would be so I know. scary. I think that was really her first, like, red carpet <sighs> experience. And she really... I mean, I was so scared to do little dumb things in elementary school or whatever. I can't mm. even imagine going to a premiere. Yeah, guys, you guys don't know this, but Kelly's actually a childhood model. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I guess it's true, but it wasn't yeah. that big of a deal. Were you in an article? <laughs> I was Weren't really you young in too. An article about like someone's difficult birth or something, and you were like the baby. Yeah, yeah. It was a parenting magazine or something, and it's just weird. Like that, yeah. Not my parents, <laughs> but I was supposed to look like I was their kid, and it was some That's story. Funny. I don't know. It was just totally <laughs> fake. It was supposed to be, like, a real story. I think, but it's kind of one of those things. I I don't know. It's supposed to be real, but you know how in magazines sometimes it's, like, you're reading an article about, I don't know, online bullying, and then they tell you a story about um, yeah. Jenny in Utah. Like, she went home one day, blah, blah, blah. It's this whole story, and it seems real, but, like, you really have no yeah, way of knowing. Yeah, I know what you mean. If it is or if it is I know you were a really cute and well-behaved baby, but it must be so hard picking child actors for stuff like that because it's like, oh, they're all pretty cute. Like, and they don't know mm-hmm. what the hell they're doing. So a baby could be I well-behaved know. one day and then next, like, a total nightmare. Yeah, that must be tough. Hmm. Um, but anyway, so... For her role in The Panic Room, Kristen was nominated for the Young Artist Award for Lead Actress, but she lost to Alexa Vega for her performance in Spy Kids 2. I've seen Spy Kids 2. I was a fan of Spy Kids, but I find that hard to believe that Alexa Vega's performance was better than Kristen's, but I'll let it slide. You know, I haven't seen it in a while. (laughs) And I actually was doing some research on this award show because i know your mom always says like there should be a oscar award for young actors so i was like oh i didn't even realize that there was a whole award show for young actors and fun fact yeah, yeah there used I to be yeah i don't know if there's an oscar oh for yeah kids. there should be because it's not really fair but fun fact christian serratos who plays angela was actually nominated oh, and yeah. won this award for supporting actress in 2008 for her role in twilight I think is crazy yeah what? yeah no way because she just yeah she's i guess so it's crazy that she her role like she stands out enough yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's odd no offense but she was the i know best yeah all year i know that's isn't that believe. weird <laughs> and actually taylor lautner was nominated for this role in 2009 for new moon and uh mackenzie foy was nominated in 2012 for breaking dawn but they didn't win. Yeah. But they didn't but win. Christian Serrato's won for Angela. 
I know. That's so weird. <laughs> I was surprised. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. <laughs> but, okay, so Kristen at this time still was going to real school. She was attending A.E. Wright Middle School in Calabasas, but she really didn't like it that much. I think, you know, leaving school and then coming back, she didn't have a lot of the same friends, and I think she actually switched, like, hmm. uh, school districts or something where she didn't have the same friends that she had in elementary school anymore and she wasn't really a great student school Mm. was pretty hard for her especially since she was leaving all the time and she also really struggled with puberty and how when she was younger it was more cool and socially acceptable to be a tomboy but it got to that age where it like wasn't really cool anymore to hang out with the guys and that was hard for Mm -hmm. Kristen and I know a lot of girls who that was such an awkward stage for them where they used to be a tomboy and it was like whatever and all of a sudden yeah as people are growing up they fit in less and less with the people around them and once in middle school Mm -hmm. actually a male friend announced in class Kristen is not a girl what is she and Kristen was so humiliated and felt very insecure and just that was like the start of feeling very ashamed in herself oh my god the heck um but so then Kristen was able to drop out of school at seventh grade and continue her education through distance learning and she attended the laurel Springs school throughout her teen years and it's a school that a lot of celebrity kids have attended like emma roberts kendall jenner kylie jenner lindsay lohan the sprouse twins josh hutcherson miranda cosgrove wow. like pretty much all the la kids do school there that's insane I yeah, imagine. I was wondering if that's how Kristen became good friends with Emma Roberts, because I had no idea, like, how they would have met, but I don't think that that's really a school where people hang out with other people. So then, throughout Kristen's teen years, she booked so many roles. Like, she wasn't really well-known to everybody. She wasn't a household name, but she was really probably well-known within the industry because she worked with so many people. Mm-hmm. Like, she did so many different movies a year it's actually kind of incredible so I can't unfortunately talk about all of them because there's way too many but if I run down the list she did Cold Creek Manor which is a thriller in 2003 and she was nominated for a young artist award that year for her role she had Catch That Kid in 2004 which I've seen have you seen that one no let's let's I'm gonna go through the list let's say if we've seen it or have not seen it Speak 2004 (laughs) I have seen this um, I don't, I don't know. I feel like, maybe I haven't. Yeah, it's like, she's like a girl who had been, I read okay, the yeah, book. I've seen the plot. So, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. Um, on this, the set of this movie, at age 13, Kristen met her first boyfriend, Michael Angarano, but they didn't start dating until two years later in 2005 when Kristen was 15 and Michael was 17. And on the Howard Stern show, Kristen had said that mm. she was super in love with her high school boyfriend, which is Michael. And there's lots of cute pictures mm-hmm. of them on the internet. I don't really know too much about their relationship. One of Kristen's first scandals, per se, is when her and Michael were smoking weed on the front steps of his or her apartment oh, yeah. and um his parents apparently i judged her so oh much i know me too that. i can't believe that <laughs> <laughs> i mean i was in yeah. seventh grade or whatever but i remember telling my mom like i don't like kristen stewart i don't like that she plays bella she's yeah. a druggie <laughs> and my mom <laughs> my mom asked me like what was she doing and then i got really nervous about it and then it was like she was smoking <laughs> weed and my mom's like that's not that yeah. big of a deal <laughs> i remember funny. her saying my mom, that <laughs> i said that to my mom she probably would have been like that's horrible and then meanwhile like <laughs> <laughs> yeah my mom literally like defended her she's like well you know it's really stressful it does funny for those that's actors. <laughs> and my mom would have been like, that's horrible. And meanwhile, now I feel like if I smoke weed, my mom finds it so funny. Um, <laughs> but it, that, those that's pictures cool. are funny, though, because you can see, like, a cloud of green smoke. It's like, weed doesn't actually look like that. Like, do you think they edited it in? <laughs> Maybe. I'm looking it up right now. Oh, my gosh. Like, it's literally green. Oh, that might be the lens, actually, from the camera. Like, I used to think it was this really big cloud of smoke. Yeah, it it actually might be the lens. Never mind. (laughs) Oh, yep. There's the picture. Yeah, they're barefoot. (laughs) 
<laughs> I wonder if that's the Chihuahua mix. There's also a picture of Does Kristen not look like it. when she was young wearing a bathing suit, a bikini that has two yeah, three, I see uh, it. pot leaves on it. <laughs> I see it right now. <laughs> that's yeah. funny. Oh my god. So, bit of a stoner, which I love. She's a stoner. She's a stoner. Um, after Speak, Kristen was a minor role in the movie Undertow in 2004, and she was nominated for a Young Actress Award for that. She was in Zathora in 2005, wow. which I think I've seen. Yep. Yeah, I um, have. The Messengers in 2007. I haven't seen that. Me yeah. <laughs> The Land of... Yeah, yeah. Are you waiting yeah. for me to say? <laughs> in, in The Land of Women in 2007. I know you've seen that, right? And she was in the Cake Eaters in 2007, which Kristen's mom in an interview said that that was her favorite Kristen Stewart movie. Mm. And she was in Into the Wild in 2007. And as we know, that's the movie that really drew Robert Pattinson's attention to Kristen and made him want to play Edward in Twilight. And I am Mm. not sure, but I think it's also the role that drew Catherine Hardwick to Kristen as well. Yeah. I think that so. That one probably was a catalyst for her being in Twilight. She was nominated oh. also for Best Supporting Young Actress in that. So, like, even though she wasn't unknown, people in the industry knew her fairly well. Like, she had worked with yeah. so many people, probably so many directors. So I think it really makes sense that she would have ended up being in a big movie like Twilight eventually. And she, mm-hmm. all of her performance had been really well praised. Did you find that she was in a movie called Fierce People? I think so. Is that a short film? I don't know. It'll come up later. Um, but I had never heard of it. But apparently, I read that she was in a movie in 2005 called Fierce People. Oh, yeah. I think that did come up. But I don't have it listed. She's on I the poster. That. She's so young. Oh, my God. So many movies. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Um, and then she, in 2008, anyway. she also was in a movie called Jumper. She was also in a movie called What Just Happened. And she also was in a movie called The Yellow Handkerchief. And she also was in a movie called Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> I saw The Yellow Handkerchief. Oh, I haven't That's seen it. any of the other ones. Besides Twilight. Uh, that was good. Eddie Redmayne's oh, yeah, in yeah. there. Kristen has like a southern accent, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so for Twilight, Kristen yeah. said this was the first time that she was able to really travel on her own. She was 17 when the movie started and then 18 when it wrapped. And she's really excited to have that independence. Um, and as you guys know, she became an overnight A-list celebrity right away. Um, at this mm-hmm. age, 18, her public persona also really became well known. You know, the fidgeting, the no smiling, the swearing, the running her hands through her hair, wearing sneakers. <laughs> it all became very iconic. Um, and she was dubbed wow, the no. nickname k Stew, which I don't think she really likes that much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I always say when, that. When uh, she, when people started talking about her and writing things about her, I think that this was a really tough time. I don't think that she really had, and no one would at that age, like 18, 19 years old, she wasn't able to really distance herself from her, from it, and I think it really got to her. She said to Elle in 2010, like, yeah. people say that I'm miserable all the time. I'm not, it's not that I'm miserable. It's just that somebody's yelling at me. I literally sometimes have to keep myself from crying. It's a physical reaction to the energy that's thrown at you. And I also just read a lot of things of her, you know, getting so mad about the things that people write about her that I don't picture her getting mad about that stuff today. But at that age, it was mm-hmm. very toxic for her. And even little things like at the MTV Movie Award, she had dropped her award on stage and it was really cute like it wasn't that big of a deal but then of course people are saying like she's awkward she's this she's that and so at all other award shows she like refused to ever hold her award on stage um because she was just so nervous Mm -hmm. and self-conscious that you know people would say things about her like even when she presented at the oscars she had cleared her throat she like coughed and people made a big deal about that she was just Mm -hmm. a very easy target for a lot of hate that was directed at her And she was very anxious during this time of her life. She told Marie Claire, between ages 15 and 20, it was really intense. I was constantly anxious. I was kind of a control freak. If I don't know how something was going to turn out, I would make myself ill or just be locked up or inhibited in a way that was really debilitating. But it's really sad to think about. Mm -hmm. It is. We talked about that (sighs) when we were talking about Robert Pattinson, too, that those years 
we're a lot darker from them than for them than we really think. And I'm happy that I mean it's not that yeah. they all didn't also have an amazing time, but that they were able to get on with their lives after that and become more confident and happy and have more privacy. Mm-hmm. Well, I think you're. I don't know. It gets romanticized so much, but I think that your teens and early 20s is a really tumultuous, mm-hmm. hard time. Like, I don't know. It's I find it yeah. hard. I, find, I have found it really stressful. And with all that pressure mm-hmm. of the whole world talking shit about you and people stalking you and all this pressure to, like, live up to the critics and stuff. I don't know. There's just so many other things that would make yeah. it even more anxiety inducing so i can see why that it's it's kind of sad because we love twilight but i can see why that wouldn't be a happy time yeah. in their life i okay i'm sure there were happy times but like i think overall they both seemed really anxious i don't know if you should cut this out because i feel like a huge tool for saying it obviously we're not <laughs> we're not famous at all but even with the podcast <laughs> like we have gained a bit of a audience that we didn't have before and more people are aware of us people who people know us and we don't know them and we love it but Mm -hmm. at the same time it can get a little scary or overwhelming thinking like oh like I mean it's not make or break it's not the end of the world but we have to sustain this in a way or we have to keep it going or almost feel like it would be ego crushing if all of a sudden we lost it or what if I say the wrong thing now and people suddenly hate me and get mad at Mm -hmm. me because you know we're just totally unscripted here on our podcast and it's scary actually it's It's hard hard. and if people say anything negative like we would see it and it would bother us and so it does get I mean that is like the smallest scale compared to Kristen but I can't imagine that just like every moment of your life yeah and with the internet and stuff, all it really takes mm-hmm. is one person to say, like, to write, whether it's a tweet or an article, to say, like, so-and-so is this, so-and-so mm-hmm. is awkward or said the wrong thing or whatever, and then everyone is like, oh, you're right, mm-hmm. and suddenly all these people, like, turn against yeah. you. Ugh. And they don't even give it a second thought. It's just becomes popular opinion. Mm-hmm which would be terrifying. Kristen, she did have a bit of a scandal. People got really upset because she compared paparazzi to being raped in an article once, which people got really upset oh, about yeah. that. And I can understand why people got upset, but she... Didn't they talk about that on yeah, Stern? Yeah, she obviously didn't mean any harm by that. Um, I know it's, mm-hmm. like, not a good comparison, but at the same time, like, she was trying to... Certainly... A violation. Yeah, she's trying to vocalize something that not a lot of people can relate to, and I think that's hard to do. And, like, what do you really compare it to? Mm Mm-hmm. It is a bit too far, but... Yeah. I get what she's trying to say. It's like... Yeah. This extreme attention stalking, basically, Mm -hmm. from a total stranger. I mean, that's scary. Yeah. No, it's terrifying. Mm Mm-hmm. And especially, she said on Howard Stern that people feel like we put you here, like we own you, that they could just yeah. write whatever they want, or you have to smile at them and you have to give them your whole life. And I think she was just very disgusted, rightfully so, by that idea when she was a young woman just trying to discover who she was. Mm-hmm. Um, she also, I just want to talk a bit about her acting because I thought this was interesting in a magazine for uh, British L. Uh, they interviewed Chris Weitz, and he says, there's a threat to her health and the way that she works and that she can't project feelings she doesn't have herself, which I thought was really interesting. Mm. If you shoot a scene in which she has a nervous breakdown, that's potentially what you're going to get. I have found myself concerned for her at moments. During the no filming way. of Twilight, studio executives found themselves concerned about Stuart and Pattinson. Both of them had the tendency to go deep to find the emotional core of a scene, says the first movie director, Catherine Hardwick. I think the producers were worried, and they were right in some ways, that it was going to be one no, all brooding, all serious. 
At this mention, at the mention of this, Stuart swings. Well, they're thinking they're lucky stars now that we were serious about it. She says they wanted us to smile more. They literally just thought it was not light enough, not fun enough, that it wasn't like a love story. But I'm sorry, when you're in love with someone, you're not laughing. Well, maybe you are, but not in this story, <laughs> which I thought was cute. Wow. And also true, I feel like I've heard that many times where she's like, I'm not a liar, like I can't lie. But I can't imagine as an actress having to genuinely feel every emotion that you yeah, feel. What? <laughs> like I know. Do you then fall in love with every co-star that you have? <laughs> like, Because I remember when she said that she was filming New Moon, that she gave a bad performance because she was so in love with Rob. And it's like, yeah, but... You're not in love with every person that you're acting with, are you? (laughs) (laughs) Are you? That's not really Rob, that's Edward. (laughs) That's really interesting. And, okay, yeah, so she also dated Robert Pattinson. (laughs) (laughs) No way, what? (laughs) She did, yeah, they met on the set of Twilight and... (laughs) They got together on the set of New Moon, and that was the last time that any of us have ever seen her with Michael Angarano. He spent a few days up there. He got photographed up there, hanging out with her, doing his little piggyback ride, holding hands. Uh, But last (laughs) was spotted together in March of 2009, I believe. Little piggyback ride. (laughs) Um, And... There were also, like, people Mm -hmm. edited pictures of Michael and Kristen, but, like, edited in Rob, which just fueled the rumors even more that she was dating Rob. But to me, it was still, I wasn't confident in it, but I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. It seemed too good to be true. But apparently that is when they got together, according to Kristen. Um, And they were very secretive about it. I'm not going to really dive into Robston because we've covered that in two episodes. And also, emotionally, it's just too hard for me to... Go back yeah. to that sometimes. Let's not even, like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The but yeah, only, we have covered it. Yeah. The only thing I thought was interesting is during the height of this, like, she was giving some interview, and she said, I would never cheapen my relations by talk my relationships by talking about them. People say, just say who you're dating, and people will stop being so ravenous about it. It's like, no, they won't. They'll ask for specifics. And then the reporter said, a possible clue exists on the Kindle she has brought with her. <laughs> Among the downloads is Guy du, po- du Bon Ponce, Bella Me, the movie version of which Kristen, which, in which <laughs> Panson is filming, which I thought was cute. Wait, so in the say- same article, that's what... The writer said. Yeah. Or she that is so don't... funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, well, if you just tell us, we'll stop obsessing. Yeah. And she's like, no, you won't. And then there she is <laughs> obsessing. Like, yeah. <laughs> we can tell from the Kindle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is confirmation. Why would she be reading the book that Rob yeah. is starring in? Yeah. And that's sweet. That just sh- I think that gives you a little bit of insight into their relationship, that she was very interested in the work that he was doing. That is sweet. That's cool. Um, and when they were together, they lived in Los Feliz, apparently. or I think they both mm-hmm. had separate houses, but they spent time together, and they adopted two dogs, Bear and Bernie, which we talked about, which Kristen still has those dogs to this day. But mm-hmm. their relationship was really impacted by fame. Um, Kristen has later said people wanted me and Rob together so badly that our relationship was made into a product. What people, you may ask, mostly me, um, (laughs) and a lot of other people too. Yeah. said, it wasn't real life anymore. All that was, all that was gross to me. It's not that I want to hide who I am or hide anything I'm doing in my life. It's that I don't want to become a part of a story for entertainment value, which I feel really bad about because I was so invested in their relationship for so long. And in many ways, I still am. If they got to, together today, I would uh, probably quit my job and just Google them all day. <laughs> <laughs> we would have to, oh, I feel like we would have to go to LA and try to find them. Oh my God, yeah. That is so bad. I know. It's, it's. Oh, I feel so troubled about it because I feel bad for them, but we're literally mm-hmm. part of the problem, and I know <laughs> I can't change it. I know, like <laughs> I'm sorry. I I just can't help it. Mm. Take it as a compliment. <laughs> and I feel bad about the paparazzi, but also I got a lot of my information from the paparazzi. <laughs> It's so bad. It's such a guilty pleasure. That's like how you would know they're still dating if they're yeah, seen. Yeah, exactly. 
when I would see a picture of them together, I'd, I'd freak out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. It's like, am I the reason they're not together anymore? You, Part yeah, Mel, you are the sole reason they're not together <laughs> yeah. anymore. I know. What if all of us are the reason they're not together? I know. What if we just didn't care? What if we all just stopped caring? <sighs> I've, you know, that's a very like Buddhist <laughs> thing to say. Like, would you find peace if you just didn't want things anymore? Yeah. Maybe, but I don't know how that's I really know. possible. <laughs> well, speaking of not caring anymore, so in another Marie Claire article, which Kristen Stewart seems to do a lot, yeah, I found this little hint. So it has nothing Ooh. really to do with Rob, but um, Kristen must have told all of this to the reporter, and the reporter summarized it and said, Stewart hasn't entirely abandoned her emo underbelly. She still reads and writes poetry. She still weeps and she still weeps when she listens to Van Morrison. And Van oh Morrison God. is notably Rob's favorite musician of all time. Yeah. Of all time. Of and, all time. <laughs> and Kristen said this in an interview like only a few years ago. So is she tell first of all, she's telling the reporter, I cry when I listen to Van Morrison. The reporter doesn't doesn't know the context of that. Yeah. I think that's a little bit. But that's clue. like that's like listening to the songs. I feel like everyone does this, like, has songs from of your ex, from mm-hmm. your time with an ex that she's literally saying. She's listening to her Rob music mm-hmm. and crying. And crying. <laughs> yep. When did yep. she and say that? I think she said it, like, in 2016, 2017. Wow. So I a while bet, ago now. But. I bet. You know, I think they're both happy in their relationships, but over the years, I'm sure they had moments of... Mm-hmm. nostalgia i i mean i really think again i don't want to talk about this too much <laughs> but i really think man that to both of them like they are each other's big love that just didn't work and like big heartbreak and i don't think they're gonna get back together and i think they are both happy to have moved on but mm-hmm. it does seem like they're not gonna just like casually hang out like it's no big deal you know what I mean like I, yeah. I, 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 I there is a lot of pain there and where there's pain there's love mm-hmm. well but I agree that. like it's too it was too big to be casual about now mm-hmm. yeah there's just no way um then there was a whole cheating scandal I'm really not gonna talk about that I don't want to and it seems like it was a really dark did. yeah we've already talked about it it seems like it was a very dark period in Kristen's life a dark period in my life for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah the only thing of significance about that is that she actually did drop out of a movie after that. And I really wonder, like, what's the backstory there? Did she, was she too depressed to do it? Maybe. Was the studio saying they weren't going to do it anymore? Did they think that, you know, they would have been losing an audience? Really not I sure. I can see her maybe being too depressed. Yeah. I don't know. Probably a mix of things. What was the movie? It I was called remember. Callie. Callie. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened to that. Um, hmm. So she also worked on other movies during the Twilight years. She was in Adventureland, which yep. uh, she got really good reviews for this one. Robert Eber of the Chicago Times gave the movie three out of st- four stars and wrote, What surprised me was how much I admired Kristen Stewart, who in Twilight was playing below her grade level. Here is an actress ready to do important things together and with the others they make Adventureland more real and more touching than it may sound Mm. which is a little bit of a I really like that movie yeah me too but also I I don't like how people always diss Twilight Twilight. but whatever yeah we're used to it um Christian was also in Welcome to the Rileys in 2010 and in this role she played an exotic dancer and I think to prepare she said that she lived on junk food she chain smoked and she stayed up all night which, again, that doesn't seem like the healthiest lifestyle to play a character. <laughs> but I understand it. She's very method. Oh, my uh, God. She was, of course, in The Runaways in 2010. And this was really the first movie that came out, um, or that Kristen shot after Twilight was released. Mm-hmm. And she received favorable critical reviews, largely due to the, or the movie received favorable critical reviews, largely due to the performances by Kristen and Dakota Fanning. Um, but it didn't really do that well at the box office. It placed 18 opening weekend, and the studio had to 
change its release from 1400 theaters to less than 300 after that and a majority of the audience was 25 or older and they think a lot of the underperformance in the box office had to do with the underfunding of the marketing and also a failure to really bridge an audience between fans of Kristen and fans of Twilight and then also fans of the runaway or people people the runaways or people who would even remember the runaways Mm -hmm. I did see that movie yeah, I actually have never seen it. It was cool. But now it's been years. I saw it, like, around when it came out. Yeah. Yeah, many know. years ago now. Um, Kristen was also in Snow White and the Huntsman in 2012, which was mm-hmm. generally very successful at the box office, actually. It opened at number one, which I didn't realize because I feel like no one even really talks about that movie. Yeah, that's so Um, weird. Yeah, reviews were pretty mixed overall, but a common theme was that reviewers really liked Kristen's performance and that she gave a, uh, she showed really convincing growth from her character in the beginning of the movie to her character in the end. But there was Mm -hmm. some negative reviews. Uh, This guy, Scott Fonda, states that Stuart Snow White pouts her lips, bats her bedroom eyes, and scarcely seems to have more on her mind than who might take her to the senior prom let alone the destiny of an entire kingdom, which I think is really, really sexist. Like, that seems like yeah. someone who just has a huge judgment about Twilight and wants to project it onto Kristen. <laughs> That's her bedroom eyes. <laughs> yeah. What? Senior prom. Ugh. Yeah, that pissed me off. <laughs> <sighs> And then she also was in On the Road, which Mm -hmm. she gained pretty positive reviews for. Uh, One reviewer said, Stuart as Mary Lou completes the awkwardness through some for a large part of the film. And while there is little for her to do here, she also makes very little out of what she has to work with. And that she flatters to deceive, offering some moments of passion, criminally underplaying a character in Mary Lou who is supposed to burn with energy. Oh, so that's a negative review at the end. Damn. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> then someone else said, certainly there's nothing regrettable about Stewart's performance here. It reestablishes the promising character actress less seen in Into the Wild and held captive as Twilight's leading lady for years, or last seen in Into the Wild. Mm. Again, no need to diss Twilight, but whatever. <laughs> um, and hmm. Peter Travers from The Rolling Stone gave her a really positive review as well and said she was a live wire in the front seat of a car with Sal and Dean all naked. She jerks off both boys with a joy that defines free spirit. I've been meaning to see that movie for years. Yeah, I've never seen it either. I haven't. But she literally works her butt off. She has done so many movies. It's like hard to talk about all of them all. It's hard to see them all. That's actually the end of my notes. I feel like I didn't really dive deep enough, but I know that you have a lot of notes, too. No, I mean, I wanted to say, Mel, thank you so much. I learned so much, actually. Ooh, So much of that I did not know, and I loved the part when you were describing what she became known for, like her hair and cigarettes and, I don't know. It was cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's very nice of you. I really did learn a lot. And I think you I think you said a lot. I mean, we're at like an hour 15 now, so that was good. All right, well, take it away. But also, I was going to say that, you know, I mean, you texted me earlier saying you wished you went deeper or something or what, how did you phrase it exactly? I just wish I uncovered a little bit more, but... Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? I feel like we can, if we want, keep talking about her for Patreon. Yeah, that's true. Nice yeah. plug. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. I am a little scared. I have 13 pages. Oh, my God. <laughs> but some of it is, it's on a Google Doc. Some of it is, like, double spaced, so... Yeah. You know, it's, it's going to be okay. All right. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Here's Kristen Stewart, 2013. Oh, I feel overwhelmed right now. <laughs> mm, can't believe it. Okay. Yeah, so as we've already covered in throughout an episode that they were still dating at the beginning of 2013... And then there were all these rumors. Um, are they buying a house? Are they breaking up? 
the scandal thing um, had happened and it was reported that they didn't spend the holidays together in London when... Mm. So this was like, I guess, the end of 2012 going into January, you know. Yeah. So on January 10th, Kristen was on the cover of V Magazine for their spring 2013 preview. And I just have two quotes that I took from it. Just, you know, seeing where she's at as a person. She said on her new attitude towards life, she said, I have realized that you can close yourself off to life if you put up walls, but it's a difficult thing. So I've gotten quite comfortable with just being unafraid. I keep saying the same thing. It's not about being fearless, but really just embracing the fears and using them. Thanks, Kristen. And then <laughs> <laughs> just on acting, she said, it's a pretty fucking odd thing to want people to pretend to be another person and then have a lot of other people who watch you do that. You have this experience of reading something and if you don't bring it to life, you're basically deleting it. The responsibility mm. is amazing. I thought, I That's never really... really deep. Yeah. yeah, I never really thought of acting that way. It's like if she doesn't capture what's in the script or whatever, then she's like erasing... Yeah. What was written? I don't know. Interesting. I like that about her that when it comes to acting, her favorite thing is just telling a story. It's not being mm. an actor, being famous. It's just like conveying somebody else's art. Yeah. That is cool. I know. I like that about her. So in February was the Oscars and she was on crutches at it mm. and when she was asked about why she said i am an idiot and <laughs> <laughs> she posed for pictures on the carpet unassisted and hopped along with daniel radcliffe to present the production design oscar <laughs> to lincoln but then she was photographed with her crutches again as she left the ceremony and apparently her makeup artist told people that she cut the ball of her foot on glass two days ago Oh, God. I know. That sounds painful. So, I don't know why that happened, but it did. <laughs> and at the Oscars, she was wearing a ring that a lot of people thought looked like it was Bella's engagement ring. Mm. But I don't know if it actually is or just looks similar. But she did tell LUK, I have all the rings that I wore as Bella in Twilight, including her wedding ring. My other treasured pieces are mainly vintage and a Cartier nail bracelet. Okay, that's just talking about other jewelry, but... Yeah, I guess she has Bella's rings, which is cool. Oh, wow. I know. Um, on February 11th, we may have said this in the Rob Snip so, but she was on Ellie Goulding's Instagram, like a party picture with a bunch of other people, mm -hmm. which is just so weird to see pictures like that. I know. <laughs> with Kristen. Uh, this is while Rob... No, I don't think we mentioned it, but this is when Rob was filming the rover... Mm -hmm. in australia so of course all these articles back then were like oh my god Kristen's partying <laughs> she's out like <laughs> i don't know they were trying to make it seem like she was on the verge of cheating or you know what i mean yeah trying to <laughs> so doubt <laughs> yeah because oh while rob's away she's out again but while rob's away Kristen will play <laughs> yeah <laughs> but if you think about it like if your friend's boyfriend was busy working who would expect her to stay home? I know. <laughs> like, I'm not... Sorry, guys. I can't go to the party. Um, my boyfriend's busy, so... That is so annoying. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that would be really depressing. And, like, honestly, like... Okay, I know what they say about cheaters, but she had such a bad cheating scandal that I feel like she's not going to risk that twice. <laughs> I know, really? <laughs> She's kind of the last person to cheat, right? <laughs> yeah, especially in public. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. Um, that March, you know, there were just lots of pictures of her out and about in L.A., sometimes with Rob, sometimes by herself. She was seen at a roller derby, roller skating place, and took pictures of fans. March 26th. Okay, this is like about Robston. I, I shouldn't be saying this. I was gonna... <laughs> No, go for it. Okay, I well, we I was, need a little bit of Rob Stone. Yeah, well, apparently her and Rob were at a golf course date? Question mark? I, oh, I know, I've never I heard of that. Yeah, I know. I don't know. I guess they were at a golf course. Um, and then they are at the Katy Perry assistant party. We've talked about that. Mm -hmm. And I said, <laughs> I just wrote, who knows what she was working on? Reading scripts? Relaxing? Meeting for movies? I don't know. Like, 
basically i don't know what she was doing during this time yeah (laughs) uh on her 23rd birthday she was spotted at sun city tattoos in el paso texas Mm. apparently her and rob were in marfa texas at a wedding over the weekend oh i remember Mm. that Mm mm-hmm so yeah, Coachella out and about with Rob, but then in May, as we know, it was reported once again that her and Rob had broken up. And <sighs> I know it's sad. sad. I know it's crazy. It's I feel sad. like, you know, that feeling when it ended for the second time, it's just kind of like okay. Yeah, like I was already used to the idea. I guess it's over. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Just kind of admitting defeat as a fan. Yeah. I don't think we freaked out. It's just, it is what it is. I don't think so either. I was sad. I was, I was probably still in a little bit of denial. Like maybe they'll get back together, but I kind of knew it was over. The media outlets were totally in denial too. There were so many Mm -hmm. articles for ages, even like, even recently. Even now. (laughs) Being like, oh, are they getting back together? <laughs> yeah. It's insane seeing all those headlines that are just obviously not true. I know. But or, remember when they were spotted, like, at a bar together years ago? Like, someone tweeted, like, yeah, yeah. I'm out at this bar, and I see Robert Pattinson, and then who walks by? Kristen Stewart. I remember everyone was sending that to me, and I was like, oh, gosh, I can't even let myself get excited right I know. now. <laughs> That's a tricky one. There's, like, no way to know if that one's true or not. I know. I don't know. Anyway, well, life goes on, I guess. Um, <laughs> she, went to, <laughs> she went to the Met Gala, and she was wearing a red Stella McCartney jumpsuit with spiked heels, mm. looking pretty awesome. And I thought this was so interesting that she arrived at the Met Gala in a car with Stella McCartney and Cameron Diaz. Oh, Isn't that that's so odd. random? And it just yeah. led me to a train of thought. Like, do you think being an actor, all these people are just kind of like people you work with? The same way there's just people in your office building. It's like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does she like, see Cameron Diaz as just someone in in the business? Yeah, someone who works down the hall. <laughs> the theme for the Met Gala was punk chaos to couture, which I think is perfect for Kristen. I like mm-hmm. I like her look at this, but some people didn't think it was great. But I yeah, I know the one you're talking about. I really like that look. Yeah, I think I think the shoes especially were very Kristen. Mm-hmm. So then, in July 2013. She was filmed flipping off and swearing at a paparazzi guy, a cameraman. (laughs) And it is on video. You can see it if you want to. But I guess she said, fuck off. And the guy, the cameraman says, why are you saying fuck off? And Kristen says, because you're a piece of shit. You don't deserve to breathe the same air I do. (laughs) And, (laughs) And then the cameraman keeps asking her questions about... Our Pattinson and said and then says who's a piece of and then Kristen says you are you fuck face <laughs> and then she comes out because she was kind of hiding behind a gate she comes out mm-hmm. gets in the car and says nothing that's gotta be so hard people just yelling things at you like about your personal yeah. life oh it was cool to see her like that <laughs> you are you fuck face <laughs> I think I think possibly the same day or at least the same week or something, her car was really dusty and someone wrote I Heart uh, Rob on her car. That's horrible. <laughs> I know. Probably paparazzi. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Okay, so then she went to Paris Fashion Week. You know, things are happening gradually here, but I'm starting to see, you know, looking back that... She's getting really into, like, the fashion scene, and people are starting Mm -hmm. to call her a badass and stuff, and it's not really formed yet, but her reputation really changes over the course of, like, 2013 to now, but Mm -hmm. not quite yet, not quite yet, but um, during this summer, though, 2013, she got new tattoos, like, four small parallel lines on her wrist and a very tiny infinity symbol, or maybe it's an eight? 
Mm. Maybe it's a B. I don't know. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I feel like it's probably an infinity symbol. Yeah. It's just kind of weird because people yeah. say that's like a basic tattoo. I know. And I wouldn't think of Kristen having that, but I guess she does. But it's cute. It's really small. It, I think it's tasteful. Wait, I hate to connect this to Rob because it probably has nothing to do with him. Do it. She had an infinity necklace that he gave her that she oh always God. wore when they were dating. Until she got another necklace from him. Coincidence? That's, like, odd. That is odd. But I also remember thinking it was weird that she didn't have tattoos for the longest time because mm-hmm. her mom's, like, super tatted and stuff, and she seemed like someone who would have them. Yeah. I think these were her first ones, and they were pretty small. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then in July, she was on the set of Camp X-Ray in August... That, I mean, that's what she was doing. She's filming, I guess. In August 2013, she enrolled in a course of English literature at UCLA. Oh, my God. I never knew that. I didn't either. That's so cool. And, yeah. And there were, like, she said a lot about wanting to study and stuff, and I don't really know what happened with that. I mean, I think it was just mm-hmm. a course. I don't think she was signing up to be, you know, a full-time or even part-time student, but... Yeah. Um... Yeah, I guess Imagine she... Imagine having her in your class. That would be crazy. I know. I know. But I think that she did a lot of it remotely because mm-hmm. then she went to Berlin to film Clouds of Sils Maria. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. Anyway, this is... Next, this is when... We talked about this before, but Harvey Weinstein revealed an interesting tidbit. This is what the article said. That... Kristen raised $500,000 for Hurricane Sandy relief simply by sitting with a Middle Eastern print for a mere 15 minutes. Oh my god. Do you remember this? Like, Yeah, I remember talking about that. Yeah, this She was like set up. Guy? Yeah, he just wanted to spend time with her and she was really creeped out by it, but she did yeah. it for the money. And yeah. Ugh, that's so manipulative. I know. Man. Tabloids were saying that um, <laughs> she was trying to start things with Rupert Sanders, but I doubt it. I highly, yeah, I doubt that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just throwing it out there that. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the thing too. Like when I was doing research, I'm like, do I include this? Like just like rumors. I'm like, mm-hmm. like I don't want to just say things that aren't true. I know. <laughs> So when she was in Berlin, I thought it was funny. She was out walking around wearing this hat that says, these motherfuckers. (laughs) She's funny. Yeah. (laughs) Like, she could be really tough sometimes. Like, who wears a hat that says that? (laughs) She is. I remember she had always, like, flip off the paparazzi, too. And I always feel weird giving the middle finger. Me, too. I do, too. (laughs) It never looks good. It doesn't look good. It (laughs) seems really vulgar, yeah. Yeah, and it's awkward because it's, like, silent. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I get what you mean. It is silent. (sighs) Okay. Remember when someone was flipping me off driving? Yeah. That was mean. That was really mean. I very rarely ever do it. Usually I do it in, like, a joking way. Yeah, same. I used to do it more when I was around 18 or so, and sometimes I see pictures of myself doing it, and it weirds me out. Oh, I know. Me too. Like, in pictures. Like, yeah. <laughs> like what the hell? <laughs> I don't even think, think I was. to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then, then, we talked about this in the Robson episode, but there was an alleged secret meetup with Rob in October. Ooh. I think there were actually pictures of their cars together. But, I mean, we'll never know what that was, but mm. it certainly wasn't them, like, getting back together for real or anything like that, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, who knows? Just a, yeah, probably just, like, a logistic mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. She signed on to the movie Equals with Nicholas Holt. Holt? I don't know. Yeah. And articles back then were calling it the romantic version of 1984. Mm, I remember that. I didn't know that, and people were all pissed off about it, and I didn't know, is it literally supposed to be 1984 but romantic, or is that just how people were describing it? I don't know. I I mean, 
you and I haven't seen it, mm-hmm. but I remember hearing that they were going to be in a version of 1984, but I don't know if it's just inspired mm-hmm. by it. It's weird. Then, you know, the name is Equals, and I feel like people didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. She got even more tattoos near the end of 2013, and... I don't know. I never really made the connection. I'm not saying it's why, but I think that had been a really tough year. I mean, that's when her and Rob broke up, and I never made the connection that that's when she started getting all her tattoos. Yeah. I don't know. But Maybe it's a coincidence. I, I think that not. makes sense. I mean, also, that's kind of like a year or so after Twilight ended, too. I feel like she probably True. didn't feel comfortable getting them during those years. Yeah. Although, I wouldn't put it past her. Yeah. I mean, they could easily cover up tattoos in any movie. Mm Mm-hmm. I could see her. Just the same as the Joan Jett hair. I don't know. Yeah. being like, oops, we have to deal with this. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, She signed on to a couple more movies, American Ultra and a small role in Anesthesia. Anesthesia? I can never say that. And she was named the new face of Chanel by Karl Lagerfeld, and she was up to kind of a lot. Hmm. And they also wrote out and about getting coffee, because <laughs> there were just a lot of <laughs> pictures of her doing that. Okay, now it's 2014. She... Oh my god, we only did one year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I thought this was really interesting. She's on the cover of Mary Claire, mm. and... She said that on a road trip about a year ago, Kristen and her friend drove through Texas where she wrote a poem. This is quoting the article. She often writes intense little verses, words, or strings of words, rearranging them in a process she herself doesn't understand but believes is somehow essential to her sanity. This poem, written after the Twilight Saga has officially ended, is typically raw and candid. Before she reads it aloud to me, she says, Oh my God, it's so embarrassing. I can't believe I'm doing this. Okay, so oh here's a poem God. written by Kristen Stewart. What? Oh my God, why have I never read this? I know, I never read it either. It's crazy. Okay, the title is really weird. <laughs> <laughs> the title is... <laughs> I swear it gets better after this. My heart is... <laughs> what? Read it. My heart is a wiffle ball slash freedom <laughs> pull. <laughs> okay. Mm-mm. Here it is. <laughs> I reared digital moonlight. You read its clock, scrawled neon, across that black, kismet, ubiquitously crestfallen, thrown down to strafe your foothills. I'll suck the bones pretty. Your nature perforated the abrasive organ pumps. Spray painted everything known to man. Stream rushed through and all out into something while the cracking stare down sun snuck through our windows boarded up he hit your flint face and it sparked and i bellowed and you parked we reached marfa one honest day up on this freedom pole devil's not done digging he's speaking in tongues all along the panhandle and this pining erosion is getting dust in my eyes and i'm drunk on your morsels and so i look down the line you your every twitch hand drum salute salutes mine. That's it. That's beautiful. I know. No wonder she shared it. That's really good. I know. It's pretty crazy. I need to analyze it better. It's interesting. I wonder if she'd ever release a book of poems. I wonder. Yeah, apparently she writes poems a lot. Yeah. I don't know. I would love that. Me too. She should. Uh, It would be so cool to get into her mind, you know? I know. Man. In the same article, she said, The biggest struggle I've ever had has been about not going to school and working instead. I was worried Mm. about turning down specific individual experiences. Like, each movie was, fuck, I have to do that movie. I just did a movie with Tim Blake Nelson, and he is brilliant. If I were as smart as he is, I could have... I could have the most killer conversation with anyone because I know I have it in me. I just don't have the tools necessarily as well developed as he does. I play this character who's getting her master's degree in philosophy at Columbia, and I think I'm smart, but I'm definitely not book smart in that way. That makes me sad. Yeah. At least she is smart, though. I know. I don't like that she thought that. I don't know if she still does, but... 
I feel like to be a good actor, you have to be smart. Mm-hmm. Like, even book smart. Because... I know. You have to really understand things deeply. And you have to really understand a character, which takes literary analysis. Yeah. It seems like she reads a lot and mm-hmm. is curious about a lot of things and wants to be, you know, book smart, as she says. So... Yeah. I'm sure she is. What do I have next? I think this is from the same article. I th- she's talking about Robert Pattinson. I don't know if we read this in... I'm not directly talking about him, but... She's, it says, her breakup with Pattinson in 2012 may also have instigated her year of partial exile during long road trips. At one point, she helped a girlfriend resettle in New Orleans. She ruminated over life and how perhaps the biggest mistake you can make is try to control your own heart. You just mm. don't know who you will fall in love with. You just don't. You don't control it. Some people have certain things like, that's what I'm going for, and I have a subjective version of that. I don't pressure myself. If you fall in love with someone, you want to own them. But really, why would you want that? You want them to be what you love. I'm much too young to even have an answer for that question. Mm. Chris, oh, interesting. Stuart does acknowledge a desire to someday have children and believes in adoption and recreate the happy childhood she had. I had it too good to not have that too. If I were to put money on it, definitely, yeah. But you earn that. Like, that's so not here yet. She laughs. I mean, at this point, mm. I can't tell you if I... I want to hang out on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, that's still very a young age to say. Yeah. yeah. So then she films Still Alice. She dyes her hair red for American Ultra. She goes to Cannes. Can May 2014. There's rave reviews for Clouds of Sills Maria. And it's been a year since the breakup. So mm-hmm. Let's just keep that in mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she okay i didn't know this she directed a music video for the band sage and the saints her friend sage galesi i guess oh i didn't know that band. either gosh yeah. i'm a big fan yeah and it's cool it's really cute i watched it it's just cool to see that she directed it it's kind of like shaky cam just people out on the road and i wonder cool. if she will direct more in her future well she did actually oh but i don't know if she'll do any more serious but i'll get to that she talks about it a lot june 2014 is reported that christian was mad at joan rivers because joan rivers in her book said that oh my god that christian got a whole career by being able to juggle a director's balls (gasps) <gasps> I know. And Joan Rivers claimed that Kristen Stewart's lawyer called her lawyer over the nasty comments telling Rivers to take out the offending statement. Oh my god. Isn't that crazy? She printed that in a book? That's horrible. Yeah, I know. That's so bad. What a trashy also, book. It's just like not true too because Kristen was way more famous than Rupert Sanders if that's what she's alluding to. Like... Yeah. And she's talented in her own right. That's so... Yeah, and we know that she did a ton of movies by the time she was in Twilight, even. Yeah, she did... She worked so hard. She definitely didn't juggle Kathleen Hardwick's fall, so... Yeah. (laughs) And that's the director that, like, I guess you could say gave her her career, in quotes. Yeah. So, it's just not true. (laughs) Yeah, oh my gosh. And for a woman to say that about another woman is just really... I know, it's horrible. Low. It's trashy. Yeah. In June, there was news that Kristen wouldn't be in the Snow White sequel. Um, She was... She went to a Chanel show with her red hair. People were kind of freaking out about it for some reason. Oh, because it was shorter. <laughs> she had short hair. Oh, okay. Yeah. Everyone was like, oh, Kristen Stewart cut all her hair off. <laughs> Even though it wasn't that short, but. Yeah. You know, because she used to have long hair. So it was, it was yeah. hard for people. It was, she had very long hair. And also it was, again, I hate to use the word, but iconic how she would run her hands through her hair. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it was like Bella's. I don't know. It was hard for mm-hmm. people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was in the Jenny Lewis music video for just one of the guys 
And in it, she dressed as a dude, and Anne Hathaway's mm. in it, too. I remember that video. Yeah. When she she loves Jenny Lewis. Mm-hmm. Lots of news outlets were wondering if she was dating Nicholas Holt. Mm, there were so, so many. No, I know. I don't think so either. But there were just so many things like, oh, they're out and about, mm. getting food, whatever. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then beginning of September 2014, that's when rumors started that said she was dating Alicia Cargyle. Car- mm-hmm. Is that how I say it? And it was... For a long time, people didn't really know what was going on, and people kept calling her, writers kept calling her her gal pal. Oh, and yeah. There were headlines like, Is Kristen Stewart dating a girl? And mm-hmm. a lot of times just called her a friend, but I don't know. There were simultaneously articles about her and Nicholas Holt and articles about her and Alicia. Yeah. Um,. In October 2014, she said, I'm going to take so much time off. I'm going to buy a live workspace in downtown LA, and I'm going to make some stuff with my hands. Literally, I made that decision a few weeks ago. I'm making a short film. I'm making a bunch of stuff. I don't know how I'll put it out, but I'm not going to hold it so preciously close to me. I write all the time. Oh. I know. Did she do that? I, you know, it's weird because I feel like she was acting pretty soon after that, so... (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it was much of a break, but um, yeah. maybe. Her it doesn't Alicia... seem like she ever takes a break. That's I know. the thing. It's it's like literally like four movies in a year. It doesn't seem like she ever does. And maybe. a lot of the time before like between movies, I'm sure she's just preparing for her next one. Mm-hmm. I know. So January twenty fifteen. We're in twenty fifteen now. <laughs> <laughs> Her and Alicia were seen holding hands and such, PDA, it's like pretty much official, they're together. Yeah. And she sees Taylor Lautner at a Sam Smith concert. Yay! Twilight connection. Sam Smith is one of the few people who get to follow her on Instagram. Really? Yeah. Wow. I always, I literally sometimes follow people just to see if they follow her secret Instagram. That's a good idea. Yeah, it's wow. like, who's in her posse? Does Taylor fo- follow her? Yeah, Taylor does. Mm. Wow. Crazy. I'll, I'll, I can look up this stuff later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was about to ask you, like, a ton of names. <laughs> yeah. Um, Stella Maxwell still follows her. Wow. Emma Roberts, of course, follows her. I, I could go through. Does Cara but, Delevingne? Uh, let me check. Is that okay? Yeah. I literally, like, will just, like, follow someone and check. <laughs> Is that creepy? No, I think oh that's God. genius. Okay, so these are the people who I follow who follow her. Well, first okay. of all, I followed um, Kristen's mom and uh, her brother, so they follow her, and Sam Smith follows her, and Taylor Lautner, and Kristen's friend Susie, obviously. Okay, mm-hmm. I actually don't follow Cara Delevingne, so let me follow that's her okay. right now. I was also wondering if Soko followed her. <laughs> Okay, I'll follow both, don't worry, <laughs> and I'll tell you. Soko, Soko the cat. Uh, no, neither of them follow her. Oh, wow. Cool. But isn't it funny? So she only lets 288 people follow her, and one of them is Preston, the second unit stunt double who we yeah. interviewed. So they He's must be the close enough like, for him to get that exclusive follow. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, like that, that number of people, that's, like, people you know. Yeah, that doesn't really go a long way. Mm-mm. That's pretty cool. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kristen became the first American to win the French César Award for Clouds of Sils Maria. Pretty cool. And, oh, I wrote here, it started to shift. I saw articles of people admitting Kristen Stewart's actually a good actress and it's time to start mm. ma- stop making fun of her. And as I said, a lot of people talking about how much of a badass she is and how she dresses really cool. And Because only a couple years earlier, people hated her. Yeah, yeah. And some of the same people who love her now mm-hmm. hated her with a passion back then. Yeah. But I would so say annoying. in 2015... It started to change, for real. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, in June, Kristen's mom basically (laughs) outed her relationship to the mirror, 
this was mm-hmm. the first official time it was like confirmed that she was dating Alicia, that she was dating a girl. She said, I've met Kristen's new girlfriend. I like her. What's not to accept? She's a lovely girl. And then said, I feel like people need to be free to love whoever they want. I accept my daughter loves women and men. It's okay to be who you are in my world. We all choose our friends, so we should be free to choose our lovers. Aw. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> That's really sweet and supportive. But also I wonder if Kristen was like a little bit upset that her mom yeah. had her relationship. I wonder if she was like, Mom, what the heck? Or if yeah. it was okay. Yeah. I have a feeling she was okay with it. Because mm-hmm. she said, like, she all of a sudden realized, like, oh, gosh, like, if I'm secretive about my uh, relationships with women, it seems more, there's a different connotation. Like, she's a- ashamed of it. Yeah. Um, but I guess there's also pressure, though, to be, like, a role model. Which totally. Which she doesn't want to have to be that for people. Even though she hadn't said anything, she was obviously being open about it. Unlike yeah. with Rob, like, her and Alicia were holding hands and, like, being really affectionate and not yeah. hiding it, really. So. I th- yeah, and I feel like that's heteronormative of people to be like, wait, are they dating? Yeah. Yeah, no shit, they're dating, they're holding hands. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> For real. In June 27th, no, sorry, June 17th. <laughs> <laughs> she appeared at the Women in Film Gala alongside Stephanie Meyer to showcase the storyteller's new voices of the Twilight Saga. What? I didn't even know that. I didn't know it either. <laughs> oh my god. I know. <laughs> so crazy. When did she do that? 2017? June 17th, 2015. 2015. That's so nice. I know. Isn't that cool? Yeah. She loves Twilight. She does. <laughs> Hey, Kristen. Hey. <laughs> in July, she was in Paris for Chanel, and I sent this to Mel, but she was photographed with her friend CJ yeah. and Kanye West, and I just thought it was so <laughs> weird. I don't know. I just don't think of her and Kanye hanging out. Yeah, like, what do they talk about? <laughs> they were at a table together. <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> That's so weird. I can't picture Kanye talking to her more than anything. I know. Like, I could just picture him, like, talking at her and not knowing who she is. I know. <laughs> what a crazy life she has. I know. So, then in August, to Nylon, she, about her sexuality, she said, Google me, I'm not hiding. Hmm. And I actually have this Nylon magazine. It's so beautiful. Oh, I kind of want to take pictures of it for our Instagram or something. Yeah, do it. It's pre- the interview, the article on her is pretty long. I was originally just going to read the entire thing, <laughs> but maybe I shouldn't do that. But I want to just read the opening part because you know how articles often describe, you know, what the subject or celebrity or whatever, whatever is doing. Yeah, they know? like place them in the world. Yeah, I want to do that because... Do it. I want to, you know, see what Kristen's like. Okay, it says... Excruciatingly aware of her fame, Stuart, the global movie store <laughs> movie star, orders an almond milk latte at her favorite Echo Park cafe in a manner best described as awkward charm offense. She chats with the barista about the cafe's latest expansion, yada yada yada, while nervously raking her hands through her choppy bob. Stuart's chatter isn't the most natural thing in the world, but its tacit message is clear. See, I'm a nice regular person. Tell all your friends. Walking through the outside patio is hardly better. Anyone who isn't buried in her laptop recognizes that girl from Twilight. A few whisper or drink in her greedily before looking away, but it hardly matters. The charge is in the air. Stuart's body is tense, her eyes cast down until she flops into a seat in the most remote corner, an amused, near-exasperated expression on her face. I really wish I could not be so fucking recognizable, she says in a low voice. It's so annoying. I fucking hate people looking at me when all I want to do is look back at them. Yeah, I feel like you couldn't really, like, people watch as a celebrity yourself. Yeah, that kind of sucks. want to make eye contact with people. Yeah. I feel like it says something later about her smoking. I don't know. That's a nice snapshot of her. Yeah. I can picture her in the coffee shop and people being like, is that Chris and Sarah? Yeah, oh, that must be crazy. <laughs> That would be, but I know I would have to freak out myself, (laughs) quietly to myself. I wouldn't, I don't think I'd approach her. Mm -hmm. Me neither. No, I'd be way too scared. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, then back on the timeline, you know, Mm -hmm. she starred in a Chanel short film. She, you know, has done a lot for Chanel. It's reported in October that her and Alicia had split. And a source Mm -hmm. said, who knows if this is real, but Alicia does not want to be part of her jet-setting life anymore. Aww. There were rumors that Kristen, pretty soon after, that Kristen was seeing the musician Lindsay Gunnolfson from the band Paris. According to Pop Sugar and Glamour, which are, I feel like, pretty reliable sources mm-hmm. usually, I had never heard that before. I until, hadn't either. Until looking into all this. Uh, in October, she went back to Paris to shoot Personal Shopper. Before that, she was doing cafe society yeah she okay this is the year when she said she was gonna take a break (laughs) yeah (laughs) she did not it just doesn't sound like it (laughs) it's crazy but then on the day after christmas she was seen with alicia okay yeah so seems like a lot of her relationships uh they break up and then get like she does uh well at least one breakup before the real breakup (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's so true yeah she always you know yeah. they have one breakup they give it another shot and then yeah so yeah <laughs> <Find her. laughs> january 2016 this is obviously not true but there's this wicked funny rumor <laughs> that she was dating liam nielsen <laughs> liam nielsen yeah <laughs> that's so odd <laughs> it's not true they were i think it was just that they were at the same place at the same time or something yeah and someone oh my just God. made it up yeah uh, this isn't about Kristen, but liberty ross you know um mm-hmm. oh my god i'm forgetting his name rupert sanders <laughs> rupert sanders wife. ex-wife remarried so oh, okay good for her you know yeah, we're all moving her. on with our lives yeah <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was the funniest headline I saw. <laughs> it said, mm. <laughs> it's not even that funny. It said, Robert Pattinson refuses to marry. <laughs> Is that it? Sorry. No. <laughs> refuses to marry FK Twigs unless Kristen Stewart is vi- invited to wedding? Crest- question mark. What? Oh my God. That can't be true. <laughs> it's definitely not true. It's just so funny, this, like, fake scenario this person came up with. Like, oh, he I just know. really wants her to be there, but Twigs won't let her go, and he won't marry her if she if Kristen can't be at the That's wedding. That's so stupid. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <sighs> okay. March 2016. Cafe Society debuts at festivals. Kristen seen holding hands with French singer Soko. So I guess mm. things are over with Alicia. It's only three months later. And it's crazy. We've said this before, but Soko apparently had a thing with Rob. That's so crazy. It's just so nuts. <laughs> what if you're just like a crazed Twilight fan? <laughs> Maybe. Or like a crazed Robston shipper. And so she wanted to get like the store. Wait, did she date Rob before though? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay, never Dang, mind. ruins it. Never mind. <laughs> I, I cannot see her with Rob. That is so weird. Yeah, I can't either. I don't know why I, like, check in on Soko a lot. <laughs> I have no <laughs> like idea we why. we all have those people that we just, like, randomly check in on. <laughs> yeah. So, April 2016, she has her platinum blonde hair, and... She's kind of had this hair color ever since then. Mm, Yeah, I feel like she's been blonde forever. Yeah. Occasionally she'll have it be sort of her natural color with, like, blonde tips. But, Mm. I mean, it's more like just growing it out. Maybe it's changed a couple times, but she's pretty much had that that platinum blonde since 2016. It's kind of a long time. Yeah. But then, May 7th, she was seen on a stroll with Alicia. What? Again? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I know. Wait, and I feel like they've already broken up twice. I know. So oh I guess her my and God. Soko are over already. That's fast. Yeah. In June, it seems like she's back with Alicia. Mm. They went to a charity gala together, and in July, she said she's in love with Alicia. Okay. And she's seems like, like this is kind of it. the big romance of Kristen's life, actually. I know. That's what. Okay, so this made me think about in the book, Call Me By Your Name. 
at the end. Mm -hmm. Sorry, spoiler. I don't know if you haven't read or seen it. Skip ahead two minutes. There's (laughs) a part where he's saying, I love this quote, and I'm just paraphrasing now. This part where he's saying that he used to see Oliver as like the marker in his life. Like there was before Mm -hmm. Oliver and then there was after. But it kind of amazed him that as he got older, new people mattered just as much to him as Oliver and they became Mm. like new markers and Oliver became kind of like a distant planet on this journey that he passed before and like it still mattered but there were people now that mattered just as much you know yeah I I feel like Alicia was probably like that like it seems like they they did it for quite a long time and yeah I don't know that it becomes then it's like before Alicia after Alicia Mm mm-hmm yeah crazy um i wonder if they'd get back together maybe well, she's in a relationship so <laughs> she is oh kristen is oh i think i meant alicia i'm like how do you know yeah. that you're keeping tabs <laughs> on her too <laughs> no <laughs> we know the status of literally everyone that's ever been in their orbit <laughs> yeah i hate saying this i feel like a huge dick saying this Say but i don't really like it when kristen dates people who are not famous. <laughs> I like it. I think, no, I do I think, think it's, it's really cool. sweet, and I think it's, like, makes Kristen seem even more down to earth, but it's just not as interesting to me. I see what you're saying. Because mm. we don't know anything about their personality. Yeah, so I'm like, I can't, but I'm sure she likes that, that I can't project what I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I like being able to, like, when she's dating Stella Maxwell, I like to be able to, like, watch Stella Maxwell interviews or stuff with Stella Maxwell in it to, like, get a sense of, like, what she's like. And, like, same mm-hmm. with Rob. Like, I watch things with, like, Suki Waterhouse and stuff. But, like, if it's just, like, someone who I just see a picture of, I don't which is a little boring to me. Yeah. I, I feel horrible mean. saying that, though. Well, it's just, it's less accessible, so. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's. Selfish of me, but I want to be happy most of all. <laughs> For you, as as a story or whatever, mm-hmm. it's less interesting. Yeah. But gosh, I feel gross saying that, considering Kristen hates. Well, I appreciate you telling me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she was last seen with Alicia in August, though. And then in October, it seemed like she was dating St. Vincent. Mm. The singer. And St. Yeah, Vincent... Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, St. Vincent had just broken up with Cara Delevingne over the summer, too. Mm-hmm. And Kristen was in a Rolling Stones music video, actually, for a song called Ride Em On Down. Oh, I actually didn't know that. I never saw it before until doing this research. And in it, she's, like, driving around L.A. She's looking a lollipop. Yeah. <laughs> she's smoking. <laughs> she, like, dances kind of sexy. And someone in the comments said, like, I wish she wasn't embarrassed about this. And someone responded, and, like, she is. And then that person said that she was shy about the dancing. Now, this is literally just someone in a YouTube comment, but (laughs) I believe them. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) I don't know. Okay. A lot, really a lot happened in, like, the past six months. Because now, in December, it's reported that she's dating Stella Maxwell. Okay. And she's seen in Savannah with her, and she was filming the Lizzie movie there, Lizzie mm-hmm. Borden movie. Um, yeah, that's serious. If Stella's in Savannah with Kristen, like, why else would she be there? Yeah. Okay, now we're at 2017. And this is interesting. She, this is when she started working on a short film that she directed called Come Swim. And I guess in the movie they used some kind of artificial intelligence that uses machine learning for a style transfer to kind of create, like, the same aesthetic from one shot to another. It's like, Mm. I don't know. I don't really get it, but it said to create an impressionist visual style. And she co-authored a paper on that technology. Oh, no way. Mm Mm-hmm. Random and cool. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> she's so busy i know she really is she attended the women's march and held a plan- planned parenthood sign in park city utah 
which was cool. It was cool to go through the years, and, like, I was thinking about what I was up to at the same time. What was she doing in Utah? I'm not sure. I mean, that's where (laughs) they have, like, film festivals and stuff, right? Oh, okay. I don't know why she was there, but... (laughs) (laughs) Okay, then she hosted SNL, and this is when she accidentally dropped the F-bomb. Oh, yeah. Iconic. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like we've talked about this, though. I don't know why. I think we talked about it as part of... Well, first of all, we covered Kristen's other SNL episodes, so I think we compared yeah. them. I feel like when we did Robston, we way overdid it in a way. Like, I think we went after Rob and talked... We mm-hmm. kind of talked about some of these things. Yeah. Um, she told Teen Vogue that she wasn't that into social media or texting. She said... Mm-hmm. I don't know why they were talking about this, like... I'm guessing they asked her because, you know, teens and they're texting. Anyway, (laughs) she said, when you speak to someone on the phone, that's a decipherable, understandable exchange. But with text and social media, it's essentially a dialogue with yourself and your interpretation of a shadow. Wow, that's really deep. (laughs) I mean, shadow, that's a cool way to say it. Anyway, it's not invalid. It's a new language. And then she Mm. said about social media you become addicted to that hit by yourself and with yourself every seven minutes or so and you end up wasting so much time just validating something very superficial in yourself it's definitely changed us she says it's interesting that she experiences that with her like private account yeah but i guess even she has (laughs) i read before that she puts or I think maybe I heard her do an interview where she said she put so much thought into a text message. Like, she mm. really overthinks, like, what emojis she's going to use, how many spaces there are. Like, everything is almost that's like a cute. poem in a way. Yeah. Aww. I feel like that's you. I feel like you put a lot of thought into the emoji that you use. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> it depends. Sometimes I do put a lot of thought into text. Like, I'll reread and yeah, change my I've, mind. And... I should reread my text. I don't, though. <laughs> It's okay. I'll sometimes, like, I do this all the time where I have a thing I'm planning on saying in a text message, and then I change what I'm going to say, but I don't actually backspace the sentence, so I put both sentences mm. in, but they're, like, jumbled. <laughs> it's okay. I'm absent-minded. So, also, now we're, like, moving into spring 2017, and this is when she did, like, the shaved head look, the really, really oh, short okay, hair. yeah. And I just remarked in my notes that she seems really happy. She yeah. She just seemed different. And this is random, but Bella Thorne <laughs> told Harper's Bazaar that she wanted to date Kristen Stewart. She said, mm-hmm. she's so hot. She seems like the raddest chick. I'd be so down. I think they're friends. That's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're in the same friend group. Man. Bella Thorne. <laughs> then Kristen directed the music video for the band Churches mm-hmm. for the song Downside of Me. Cool. That is cool. In May, she moved in with Stella, so pretty serious. Yeah. Um, she told Harper's Bazaar UK that she'd totally date men again. And I didn't really read into it, but... I find it weird. I'm guessing they asked her. Like, I don't... I I don't see her just bringing it up. I think that's weird people would ask someone that. I know, it is... I find it rude. Mm -hmm. I feel like people are obsessed with that. Like, are you going to date a guy again? Yeah. (sighs) And, like, what is she supposed to say? I know. (laughs) How can she even know that? Yeah, she's in a serious relationship. Exactly. Why would she say yes yeah like <laughs> like yeah, yeah when this one this ends... one doesn't work out yeah <laughs> <laughs> what a weird question <sighs> in june her and stella crashed a wedding in winnipeg of two brides oh my god i know i guess she was filming On something purpose? In... yeah i guess she was filming something in winnipeg and she met the venue owner somehow Mm -hmm. and i guess she didn't she wasn't doing anything and the owner asked the brides like would you be cool if kristen stewart 
showed up and they said yeah and she came and i guess she stayed from like 10 p.m to 1 a.m oh my god and like drank and danced and it was like just totally normal people oh my god isn't that cool i would love that but at the same time i feel like it would totally distract me from everything else happening on my wedding day yeah one of the brides said that she was really excited and starstruck but then quickly felt like she Kristen was just so normal and it wasn't even that Mm -hmm. not that it wasn't exciting anymore but she said it didn't take away too much because they just kind of like blended in and it wasn't so nice it wasn't as crazy as she thought it would be I read that apparently (laughs) there was like a nude photo leak that Kristen was a part of Oh my god. I know, but I've never seen anything, and I don't know, maybe it just got taken under control really quickly or something. Yeah, I've never even heard about that. Me neither. Very weird. There were, this is when there were talks of Charlie's Angels Mm -hmm. in 2017, and apparently Lupita Nyong'o was originally in talks for that, and I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. That would have been crazy. Instead of Kristen? No, it would be with Kristen. Oh, that would have been way better. I know. I don't know what happened. Yeah. It's funny looking back at old articles, you know. Yeah. What could have been? (laughs) So nice. On October 20th, she was seen donating food to a homeless shelter. Like, what the heck? Yeah, that is so nice. Okay, Sue. I guess she bought an apartment in NYC... I didn't know that somehow. Yeah. Um, I also don't know why I just said NYC. (laughs) (laughs) And her short film, Come Swim, debuted at Sundance, and I guess you could stream it. I haven't seen it. I feel bad about that. I don't really know much about it. But interestingly, it's scored by her ex, St. Vincent. Oh, no way. I know. They must be on good terms. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't date for that long, so... Yeah. I don't know. In December... (laughs) This this is one of the many times Anna Kendrick talked about Twilight. She impersonated Kristen on a talk show. I don't remember which one. That's so annoying. But I wrote... (laughs) I wrote, why do people often say that they forget that Anna Kendrick was in Twilight? Because Mm -hmm. I feel like Anna Kendrick never shuts up about being in Twilight. I know. (laughs) I feel like I hear that a lot. A lot. It's like, oh yeah, Anna Kendrick was in Twilight. Like, yeah, how could you forget? I know. <laughs> Anna Kendrick's lucky she was in Twilight. <laughs> I know. During all of this, I kept seeing articles that were like, Anna Kendrick said Twilight was like being in a hostage situation. Oh my god, I've seen that too. <laughs> Anna Kendrick said she forgot she was in Twilight. Oh my god. I'm so sick of Anna Kendrick. Sorry, Anna, if you're listening, but... I know. Jeez, like, be grateful. Be grateful. Okay, okay, I'm almost done. 2018. This is when someone said that they saw her and Rob at the same bar. Okay, yeah. I remember exactly where I was when I found that out. Yeah. First time since 2012, people say. But it seems like a coincidence. Like, if this is true, it seems like he was there and then she showed up or something. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I think they had... I think they were there... Forget... Forgive me if I'm wrong. This might have been a different time, but their mutual friend had a party. Yeah. I think... I think that's true. But I don't think they, like, went together and, like, left together. It wasn't like that. Yeah. They probably just both went with... uh, Their respective partners couldn't have Mm -hmm. even been with them. Mm -hmm. In May, she said that she was going to direct a um, feature-length film that was an adaptation of Lydia Yuknovich's 2011 memoir, The Chronology of of Water. And she planned to write and direct the film and that that story is... The, traces the effect of extreme grief on a young woman's developing sexuality that some define as untraditional because of her attraction to both men and women and said that she was planning to kick off production on it that summer. Shouldn't be long before she announces the actress who will play Lydia Yuknovich because it's a memoir. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe it's... I don't know if this actually happened. 
Yeah, I don't, I haven't heard anything. I know. Mm, in June, both Rob and Kristen, we talked about this, were at Lily Rose Depp's birthday party. Mm, so weird. I know, crazy. And they were seen talking outside. Crazy. Yeah. But let's not get too into it, because yeah. we've already freaked out about it. It's hard it not to, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in mm. August, she was in the music video for the band Interpol. She's done a lot of music videos. Yeah, I didn't realize that before. I know, it's crazy. In December of 2018 it was reported that her and Stella had split after two years together Mm -hmm. and shortly around that time after she was seen holding hands with Sarah Dinkin Mm. who was a stylist and she signed on to Happiest Season with the actress Mackenzie Davis okay now we're in 2019 and this is why I brought up that movie first Fierce People because Mm. There was a documentary called Love and Tosha, a documentary about the late actor Anton Yelchin, or Yelkin, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, but do you know that actor? He was um, in the movie, like, Crazy, he was in Star Trek. Oh, and... the one that died? Yeah. Yeah. I know, so tragic, and I loved that movie, and, and I mean, that's the only movie I had seen him with him but I Mm -hmm. that movie meant a lot to me so I was really sad when I heard that he died and yeah apparently because they were in that movie together fierce people she talked about him on screen for for that and said that when she was 14 and he was 15 um she said he kind of broke my heart I was so baffled by how good he was, and then I couldn't be around him. It's weird to talk about with anyone. He intimidated me because he was so voracious, and I wanted to absorb all his interests. I wanted to be better, smoother, cooler, but I couldn't even hang with him. I guess they dated briefly. Oh, wow. When she was 14. And it said, while their breakup may not have had quite the same impact on him, Stewart said he did eventually empathize with her heartbreak once he'd experienced one himself. Years after their split, she said he called her to talk about it. He was like, you know that thing you went through? I get it now, and I'm so sorry. And I was like, dude, it's fine. Oh, my goodness. I never knew that. I know. Me neither. Wow. I wonder if that was her high school boyfriend she was talking about. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> maybe and that's so sad that he died i know <sighs> he died in a really tragic way to like a total freak accident i know <sighs> and i guess like in this documentary jennifer lawrence also talked about him because they were in mm. like crazy together and chris pine was his co-star they he talks about him too um, it's just crazy i didn't know about that either yeah wow that's like crazy too that she disclosed that i know it's kind of nice in a way yeah um let me see she's she went to taylor lautner's birthday party she attended Mm. some fashion shows she's working on movies she bleached her eyebrows for a chanel Mm. show in south korea um she talked a few times about the pressure to define her sexuality that people put on her and how she didn't want to. In May 2019, she was seen getting dinner with her ex, Stella. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure when her and Sarah Dinkin officially ended, but then she started dating Dylan. What's Dylan's last name? Do you know? Uh, is it Myers? Maybe. I don't know why I didn't write it down. (laughs) Um, Wait, is that her current girlfriend? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you must be right. You're right. I think it's Myers. But I'm worried that that might also be somebody else's name. (laughs) That is Dylan Meyer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I guess she's a screenwriter and met years ago. And we talked about this with the Howard Stern one that Kristen was like, I'm in love with her, you know. I want to mm-hmm. marry her. She seems crazy about her. Um, she told Harper's Bazaar UK that she'd been told if you do yourself a favor and don't, don't go out holding your girlfriend's hand in public, you might get a Marvel movie. <gasps> and she said, I don't That's... want to work with people like that. 
Yeah, that's horrible. I know. And then she said in the same interview, she's happy with her choices. Every day I get older, life gets easier, she says. Mm. And it seems to be true. Like, I see this real lightness with her nowadays. Yeah, she seems so confident now. And just mm-hmm. the things that used to kill her inside seems like she just, like, brushes off. Mm-hmm. So Charlie's Angels came out, you know, this is <laughs> this is all really recent, <laughs> but as we kind of know, it didn't do so well in the box office, and she was asked about that, and on the playlist, and she said, well, to be honest with you, I think if I had made a movie that wasn't good, and one that I wasn't proud of, and a lot of people saw it, I would be devastated, she said. Luckily, I'm not feeling gutted because I really am proud of the movie. And I think Mm. the kind of climate that we're living in right now is polarizing and it's weird and it's kind of hard to promote a movie like that. I think trying to have a really complicated, overly politicized feminist conversation in a five-minute TV interview about Charlie's Angels, I'm like, dude, we just wanted to have a good time. Yeah. Interesting. I feel bad since I didn't see it. I know. I talked about, I was like, oh, I'm going to see that. And then I didn't. I know. <laughs> okay, now we're at 2020. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. You know, lots of movies. I guess I'll just list them off. Underwater, Seaberg, hmm. uh, Signed On to Spencer, the Princess Diana movie. We've talked about this. Yeah. Um, Happiest Season, which we just talked about. And, you know, not a lot to say because this was the year of COVID and there's just yeah. not a lot going on. She was seen <laughs> walking around with the... I noticed always a bandana. Not always, but most of the time a yeah. bandana. Do you think that yeah. she just wanted to look cool? Probably. <laughs> if she can afford a real mask for sure. I know. <laughs> she would always have a bandana. Yeah. <laughs> yep. In March kind of at the beginning of the pandemic she was seen like hiking with her friends and hanging mm-hmm. with emma roberts out and about with dylan um she posted well dylan posted like on her behalf on her instagram on kristen's behalf mm-hmm. encouraging people to vote in september um <laughs> it's so weird this is all recent yeah and recently like this week Aubrey Plaza was saying that Kristen had COVID while filming Happiest Season but she didn't really say it that way I don't know that's what all the headlines are saying but really she said that a lot of people got sick when they were first shooting it and she's I don't think they tested but I think she's Aubrey Plaza's assuming that they had COVID you know yeah well that was February right yeah so no one really, if they all were sick, and I feel like a lot of people keep, like, say that, like, I was really, really I know, sick in yeah. February. <laughs> That's what my family says, too. They're like, we think Shannon had it. She was really sick. Yeah, everybody says that. <laughs> I like, know. I must have had it back then and didn't know. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people did. They're saying that now. Um, Maybe. I, but... I think it's that kind of thing. Yeah, you can't you can't say you had it if you didn't get tested. <laughs> 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 yeah and chanel just had a fashion show that only had one guest kristen stewart oh no way um, yeah you know because she is like a face of chanel and yeah that's part of the gig i guess so, yeah but, yeah it's kind of funny that's basically all i have i i skipped a couple things but i decided last minute they weren't worth saying so <laughs> that was amazing I, Kelly I feel like most of the things you said I had never heard before really yeah I yeah learned I learned so a lot much. I learned a lot myself it was crazy <gasps> wait wow. weird did we just finish I think so covering Christmas this is too. so long this episode I know <laughs> <laughs> It really is, I just gotta say, it's really cool to have seen her grow up, you know? Yeah. She's it's, changed it's a actually, lot. It kind of freaks me out a little bit because when I first, like, became obsessed with Twilight, I think, of course, when Twilight first came out, Rob was 21 and Kristen mm-hmm. was 18, and part of me still thinks of them as those ages. I know. To think that they're 30 and 34, like... Wow. Life is just flying by. Mm -hmm. she seems like a really creative ambitious person 
Yeah, and she seems like a really down to earth person too. Really nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She has a crazy life, but I can't picture her ever being like snobby. Me neither. She doesn't seem like she's elite, I guess, even though she is. Mm hmm. I agree. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, thank you guys for listening. Yeah, thank you so much. I hope yeah. you enjoyed this. Um, if you want any involvement in our episode choices, you can join our Patreon. Uh, the lowest rank, I think it's only like, is it a dollar a month? Mm-hmm. I think it's only a dollar a month. And you can participate in polls where we pick uh, what we want to cover. You can also tell us if you have any ideas of things that you want us to talk about. It's really fun to see the polls and what people pick. It is. Um, we want to cover what you guys want us to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess we'll see what you guys say next. Okay, yep. All right. (laughs) Bye, guys. We've got a plan to catch. (laughs) Bye. Bye. You can contact us at anotherbiteoftwilight at gmail.com or find us on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram at anotherbiteoftwilight. The music is by Traces. See you next time.